or, oh, they're starting right there. They're, okay. they're going to continue uh, to take right through any breaks or anything like that. So you might just want to think about that for if you're thinking about sidebar conversations. Might not be the best place to have sidebar conversations. All right. So. Calling the budget workshop for Saturday, January 26, 2019, the Shelby Regional School District to order at, sorry, we're late, 817. Um, today's meeting's not a regular meeting. It's um, it's a workshop, so we aren't going to take formal citizens' comments. And actually, we can't really have comments on something we don't know yet. <laughs> so what we'll do is um, I'll ask the school committee members <coughs> for the public if anybody has comments. We are going to, over the next several, several meetings, be reiterating many of the things that we hear here tonight. Um, we'll also um, be going back and challenging some of the things that we hear tonight before we get to our final adoption of the budget, which needs to, um, by our bylaw and our regional agreement, happen by March 15th. So um, there will be time to comment. I'm going to ask the school committee when we have folks come up to the table, let's let them get through their presentation. And then if we have clarifying questions, let's ask today, but debate. What would I like you to do is note the subject areas that have that you think we need to have more discussion on. I'll keep a running tally of those, and then we'll ensure that those happen over the next several meetings so we have more dedicated time just to that singular topic. Um, I think that way we'll get through what we need to get through and not let things slip through the cracks, but allow these folks to get through their presentations and what they want to share with us. Um, Okay, I think that's it. So I'm going to turn it over to Superintendent Clenchy. Thank you. Uh, before we get started, I just want to um, uh, introduce probably more for the cameras in the community uh, than around the table. We have a couple of uh, additional people sitting in the audience today. We want to recognize that. Of course, Alita, we also always want to thank Alita for all of the background work that she does and helping to get everything organized for us. Uh, Tom's not sitting in the room right now, but we want to uh, do a special shout out to Tom and thank him very much for providing the food. He and his staff just did an outstanding job. Um, also, uh, sitting beside Pat is Michelle Cody. I think she may have uh, been in some of your other meetings, but uh, it, she does yeoman's work on this. It is her that prepares this binder. It, it's, it's her that plugs so many of the numbers in back and forth and does the double and triple checks and whatnot. Um, and, and so she's just a, a key pivotal part of this process. Also at the back of the room is Vicki Chark here. Uh, maybe just wave your hand, Vicki, uh, who is our treasurer and uh, she is a human resource specialist. Um, and she's been before you before, but I just wanted to reintroduce her as well. And Darcy Wardwell is also sitting to uh, Darcy just wave your hand Darcy is here she also uh, helps extensively with regards to the payroll and the salary component of pulling our budget together so they 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 both also play huge roles in and uh, particularly the salary component of the budget so we want to thank all of you for being here before we start with uh, the first um, the first group which is our elementary school principals I just want to say again this is just this is just a draft that's a blueprint that we work from in terms of the actual budget. We're going to go through some salient points in the presentation, but this is all draft. And you'll see at the bottom it says draft on many of the sheets. So that's why this is not out for disseminating to the public right now. There will be major changes made, on, made to this already on Monday. So this is our blueprint. This is where we start. I also agree with uh, Chairman Ramos. <coughs> the bottom line for today is to have everybody who's in charge of a school or a unit to come forward and basically lay out what their their asks are, how it ties in with their school, their vision, and the work that they're already doing, and the work that they foresee doing, and the through line for that. What I really appreciate this year is both the elementary school principals will present collectively, and then when the middle school principals come together, they will present collectively too. That should send a clear message of the through line and the equity that we have worked so hard to achieve across this district in terms of <coughs> instruction and curriculum. So I'm thrilled with that. So we're gonna get right to the meat of this. I'm gonna ask the elementary principals to come forward. 
Everybody knows that we are working very hard to be succinct with what we're presenting today, and we're wanting to stay on time. <laughs> so, um, as you guys are coming to the to the meeting, uh, to the meeting, to the table, um, school committee um, next Wednesday, our school committee meeting. Um, Joel, I will not be here. Kathy will be chairing me. Just an FYI, okay, unavoidable. Absolutely. Thank you. So with that, then, we're going to turn this over to our um, elementary school principals to kind of get started and uh, walk us through what you've got on your uh, presentation. You want us to follow along in here? You can follow along in both places. This will give you kind of the lay of the land in terms of the salient points. And then, of course, the, the booklet, if you go over to tab four, is where your elementary schools are. Thank you. Yep, go ahead. So good morning and thank you for the opportunity to meet with you uh, to present our budget request for the 2019-2020 school year. As the first principal on the agenda to present budget, I'm going to present two items that all three elementary buildings have in common uh, in our non-salary site-based budgets. We strive to, be, strive to be collaborative and calibrated in much of the work <coughs> we do, and these two items are no exception. Uh, as the school committee is aware, in the elementary buildings, we are in the midst of a multi-year literacy initiative. A major component of that initiative is the professional development that teachers are engaged in with regards to assessment and instruction. <coughs> in order to support the needs of students, each elementary building is again requesting funding to support the ongoing development of our book rooms. The purpose of a book room is different than a school library in that a school library is open for choice of books. Book rooms, me, book rooms provide a school-wide resource uh, to put text in the hands of students that support the skills they are developing in reading and writing in the, within the classroom. Uh, across all three buildings, we are seeing major gains in empowerment and learning from our students due to this initiative and the hard work of our staff. These resources support those goals. The second item that's common to all three buildings is the purchase of science curriculum materials. After pilot phase with the STEM Scopes program, which is purchased through teaching and learning previously, we'll be stepping into an implementation of the STEM Scopes program. The content is aligned with next generation science standards and provides critical thinking skills through hands-on and paper-based resources. This is another area in which we are seeing students empowered and pushing their own learning. Are there any questions with regards to those two items before? So those are the very first two yep. items on the, the sheet. <coughs> By the way, uh, your book, I haven't seen your, your book rooms yet, but I've certainly been in yours. It's amazing. Yes. amazing. We have lots of nice parent volunteers who came in over the summer. So. <laughs> thank you, Elaine. Yes. <laughs> uh, with regards to center, thank you again uh, for the opportunity to present the budget uh, request, uh, both personnel and non-salary. Uh, our requests reflect both district and, goal, and school goals and support the ongoing success that we have at center. With regards to personnel requests, uh, the first request comes in the form of an interve intervention based instructional assistant to work at the K-1 level. We often have students that need additional support with social emotional learning as well as academics. Um, this includes just uh, basic readiness for learning and academic needs at that level. Uh, the position would be to support students on an intervention basis and to prevent the need for an educational evaluation and potential IEP. This position would receive direct uh, it's, uh, excuse me, direction from not only the administrative staff, but also counseling staff and potentially the special education staff at that grade level on uh, implementing short-term intervention plans for our youngest students. The next request that's being made uh, is re with regards to the tech ed position that uh, supports our fifth graders. The request is for a point two FTE uh, to teach the tech ed curriculum to those fifth graders. Currently, this position uh, is being filled by the Minuteman Tech Ed position that's based out of the Hale Middle School. Over the last few years, Hale has increased the number of sections of related arts for each grade level due to enrollment increases. Therefore, the Minuteman personnel has less opportunity in their schedule to come to center. So we're looking for someone to fill that position uh, to make that opportunity um, mirror what happens at also uh, Rowlandson and Sawyer. Yeah. Let me ask a couple questions. Yeah. Um, your uh, your inter intervention position is that because you see a need now, or that you anticipate additional need? We've seen an e a need. I think in each one of the school years that I've been, I'm now in my fourth year at Center. We've had a student and, and potential students at K one that have needed additional support and going through the IEP process, the educational evaluation process. Sometimes happens. Sometimes it does not. Um, but in the spirit of response to intervention, we have uh, great support staff, whether it's OT, 
speech, uh, our counselors, uh, special education staff that can create plans and design plans, but those students require additional support during the school day to implement those plans and to teach uh, those social emotional skills, those school readiness skills, so that those kids can access instruction. And that's one of the gaps that we have. We're able to design the plans, but the implementation sometimes comes up short due to personnel. So I see great value in this, and there's no question about that. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to get in early and take care of what you need to take care of and do what you can to set them up for success. Mm -hmm. My question is, what if you don't have enough kids? What would the backfill and additional cycles for that resource be applied to? So in that case, uh, my best thinking on that would be that that person or somehow we look at the needs of does if we end up with more instructional assistance support do we then have to share with Hale or with another building I think that's one thing that we try to do if we have an overage of something we need to make sure that we're supporting other buildings with that with that position it probably would not be that specific position that FTE because it's it's designed as an intervention based but if that picks up something in first grade that's under an IEP, you could move. We could move shift. a different right. That's that would be under more of a district budget and a, a district uh, accounting code that would. So I, I, I'm trying to. That's a great think answer. Outside the box, sort of on the on the fly here, but yeah, that's that's my thinking. I appreciate that. that. I was I'm actually I was hoping you'd say there was fluidity there across the school to apply the resources and then across the district because I think the sensitivity is that we're adding positions. Or thinking of adding positions that are not full, fully taken advantage of. And then the only other question I have is on the tech ed, the shared yeah. resource. Um, I, I know Sawyer School, ha it, it's self-contained. I love my K-8. Um, and I know that it's self-contained. Are other schools sharing resources? Is this an anomaly or is this something? So Sean could speak more specifically about how his is run, but it, it has to do with that campus-based uh, situation. So if you want to uh, the way um, I share with um, we share with Burbank so uh, also being together helps that we work the schedule so that they just can walk across the hallway um, and we have to do a lot of coordination uh, Laura and I in the summer to to make sure the um, it, it all lines up and so there's so there's one tech ed for each system each, each subsystem within our, the system our fifth graders yeah. go over to Okay, so right. given that, if you need your own, then you're going to need your own. Uh, I think our numbers it's are though. Um, I, I understand. Um, we have we have a different amount of numbers total than Hale and Center, so we have less sections to cover. To, to cover, oh. they have more sections. Okay, and so does right. Hale right, right now, coming through. Okay. Right, so I can't sp I can't speak for either Burbank or Sawyer with regards to the number of sections, but I know with Mr. Grady and I have had conversations where he's now at, next year he'll be at five sections of related arts for each grade level, yeah. which is different. It used to be four. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's the problem. Okay, that's, right. that's clarification. Yeah. Thank and you. And another piece of that too is that I think we both feel, I don't want to speak for him, but I think we both feel that making this one piece of the, uh, the schedule drive the entire schedule to make it fit sometimes causes issues with our major more uh, focused curriculum areas so that's you know, <coughs> that piece of it too. okay yeah thank you I'm sorry anybody else have any quick questions not that mine were quick <laughs> okay thank you so with regards to non-salary budget requests um, a lot of it mirrors what was requested uh, in the 1819 budget and it reflects the ongoing positive work and results that we're seeing each day and across the school year. Uh, as part of the literacy inter initiative mentioned before, I'm um, also requesting grade level specific content text that will allow us uh, to move away from traditional <coughs> textbooks in science and social studies and support those curriculums um, with authentic text and embedded within the literacy blocks. And that with also the focus that those texts are more engaging and informative for our students. Uh, within the instructional technology line, those requests support our need to innovate what students are doing in the computer lab with coding and robotics. Uh, some of this innovation has been informed by our parent presenters that come in from private industry and share and demonstrate with students uh, with students what they do on a daily basis, and then we want to continue that work and get kids excited. Uh, we're looking to expand those opportunities for students with this request. Uh, lastly, actually, I'm happy to report that while I planned on steadily replacing our chorus risers at center, uh, with two sections each year out of other expenses that request is no longer being made 
as the other four sections were purchased through the donations from Stowe PTO and the Stowe Friends of Music. So that line's decreasing. Um, thank you again to both those organizations. Um, I just want to last, just uh, as I close out, acknowledge the hard work of our staff, uh, supportive parents, our awesome students, uh, along with the continued support from the district school committee and community. Uh, without any of those pieces, our school wouldn't be what it is. So thank you again for the opportunity to present the uh, center budget. And I don't know if I need to take specific questions now or. Yeah, I th I'm sorry. Like we thought I thought you were done before. I would have held my questions. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize because I just oh, you just whatever. Okay. Any questions? How much the total ask? Well, I don't think that we. Uh, I'm not sure that we did a to grand total at the bottom. To I don't see that on the executive summary, but under each yeah. line, you can see the percentage under the executive summary. Remember? I'm actually in the purple section. Yeah. <coughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. If you up uh, one more, if you had one or two most critical components that you need for this year, I w I know we I'm, I know, and I wish. But we can't. Mm -hmm. What would that one or two most critical components be? Because I, based on what you're saying, I'm thinking something, but you need to tell us. Sure. I think within personnel requests, obviously an intervention-based yeah. yeah. instructional assistant. Yeah. You know, I can, I can make the schedule <coughs> work if need be. If I have to prioritize one thing over the other, uh, with regards to those two personnel requests, uh, within. You know the the non-salary pieces within. I think just continuing our, our literacy expansion is critical. Um, you know the book room is is something that is going to support us for not just the FY twenty school year or year, but ongoing. Those books will last and they will stay and they will be resources. I think also to the an increase of the non-fiction pieces to support the content areas of science and social studies. We've shifted science standards. We're going to be shifting to social studies standards, so we need to keep up with what kids need access to. So, perspective for the school committee, um, if I could, Laura, friend, um, the what, what Ross is referencing on the reading room, the book room, is that what enabled your folk, your kids, to come in with the, the the program that you presented to us a couple meetings ago? Absolutely. It's all there's all a tie in. So I want to make sure that everybody understands that that presentation of the kids and how articulate they were and that they're finding joy. I'm not pushing this. I'm just trying to, to draw the through line so people understand what the, the asks are and how they impact the current experiences. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Sean? Thanks. And you're going to hear a lot of the same things. Uh, the connectedness has really um, uh, grown stronger and stronger over the years in terms of uh, some of the requests you're going to hear and, um, and and the curriculum connections across the district. So, you know, thank you for this opportunity to discuss uh, the budget and how uh, it supported student learning last year and how it's uh, uh, the, um, requesting for it to support student learning next year. Um, as a result of the previous budget, literacy instruction and learning has been greatly enhanced over the past year. The ongoing literacy professional development has, uh, and ability to purchase uh, resources for teachers and students has really changed the way students have access and respond to literature. They're seeing reading uh, from a writer's point of view, and they're viewing writing from a reader's point of view. So as, it's, as you talk to students, you're, it's very evident um, that their engagement's increased and their analysis of literacy has been growing. As Ross mentioned, the STEM scopes um, uh, support uh, in uh, the programming and instruction uh, in the budget last year and the request for uh, it shifting to the site-based budget this year has allowed students to continue to learn uh, science through really hands-on experience. Uh, the materials and resources are giving students experiential learning opportunities that are inquiry-based. Uh, professional development portion of the budget this year uh, currently paid for all the reading specialists, special educators, and a uh, partner teacher to uh, take part in the co-teaching um, professional development uh, that's developed a lot of enthusiasm in the teachers and it will allow for more strategic differentiation in the classroom setting. Um, looking forward to next year's budget priorities, uh, budget will continue to support the areas of literacy, science, and those shifting curriculum areas, uh, as Ross mentioned, social studies as well. The continuation of redefining our book room is also a priority. The K-2 book room has been completely transformed. The physical space has been revamped um, and new book titles have been added. Our grade three to five uh, book room has added some new titles, but the uh, physical space is a, a, 
uh, focus for next year to make it more accessible to students and, and uh, teachers. Another area of next year's budget to highlight is the technology uh, line. Uh, uh, there's an, uh, an additional ask from last year for some new robots, uh, some new drones, and uh, online programming. Uh, these additions will support multiple grade levels to be able to access more real-world problem-solving and creative skills, uh, which is right in line with the district technology plan and our current uh, MRE school improvement plan. Um, I've also had a request in uh, a personnel request for to add a, an additional section to um, our, our classes uh, to in, uh, deal with our increased enrollment. We've added over uh, 50 students in the in the last year, and a lot of them have clustered around one grade level in specific. But uh, uh, so um, that uh, request is in the budget. But overall, the budget uh, request will continue to support all curriculum initiatives and focus on constructivist, open ended learning opportunities that are really multi uh, disciplinary and cross curriculum. Question um, Your instructional technology. Oh, wait a minute, you're not done. No, I'm done. No, he's oh. done. No, I'm done. <laughs> That's it. Sorry. <laughs> I okay. speak the least out of the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, your instructional um, technology. technology asks are, are new this year. Um, well, uh, some of it was <coughs> last year, and uh, so some things have been put back in in terms of um, some subscription-based uh, yeah. pieces that are particular to MRE, and then um, online programming for the drones and for robots. So the, uh, we had uh, uh, students come and present a couple yeah. years ago, and that was primarily clustered around fifth grade. So these are to support in, um, you know, like as low as second grade. Uh, yeah. And so my question here again is, um, do the other two schools have a similar need? And if, if they I think don't. I, I think they're a little ahead of us, and that's we're trying to um, add some things um, to. And, and each area has some different. Uh, each school has <coughs> their own focuses. I know um, the center has like a three D printer, um, and we've talked about it. But we want to put uh, emphasis on programming for the drones to to go with some of the curriculum initiatives that um, and, and how the instructional technology teacher works with like different grade levels. So. It's, it's similar but different. That's great input. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any other questions for Mr. Oshel? Okay, thank you. So thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. I won't uh, I won't go into any detail reiterating what uh, my colleagues have already discussed regarding our literacy initiatives. We are grateful for the support in uh, both the resources to continue to build uh, the, the tools for students uh, to read and write at high levels, but also the ability to provide our teachers with incredibly high quality professional development. They, they, we are asking our elementary teachers, and they commit to it, to, to essentially go through a graduate level program of reading and writing instruction. It, it's incredibly powerful learning. It's, it's difficult for them. Uh, it's, it's dense, and they have committed to it, and we're grateful for that support. Um, you know, the, the point in having uh, Mr. Mulcair and tee us up and lead off with the elementary perspective is that we have started to work uh, together to find all of those commonalities that we're, we're working on to give you that elementary-based district perspective. With regard to Florence Sawyer School, uh, we don't have any additional staffing this year in terms of requests. Uh, our, our numbers look to be pretty close to similar. Uh, we have been very well supported over the last several years with regard to the instructional technology, which is why that number looks pretty static uh, to what it's been in the past. Where there are increases uh, for us are with regard to professional development, and that is um, due to continuing to build our teachers' capacity around um, their abilities to teach students the executive function strategies and working with cognitive connections and, and, uh, and that group supporting the work that the school district is doing around social-emotional learning and building their capacity in that area. And in regard to um, uh, increases in support for 504 needs, the, we're seeing more and more students that are requiring, uh, particularly with our, um, our therapeutic programs that you've been supportive of, um, 
additional resources and or time out of the classroom and or uh, supports to, um, to to help level the playing field for our students that, that have some of those um, uh, needs relative to uh, 504 issues. And that's basically the overview for us at Florence Sawyer. I'll be coming back and talking a little bit more from the middle school perspective, but I'll entertain any questions from the so the office supplies, uh -huh. that's a... It, yeah, it is. It's a large increase from what we had, where the teachers um, in the past had been looking at including in their budgets um, crayons and interactive notebooks. We're trying to consolidate that all through the office and, and manage it that way. So pulling some of that out of there and putting it... So the numbers in terms of our um, <coughs> instructional um, supplies are relatively consistent, a little bit higher because of the STEM scopes that we've added, but the uh, pulling the money out of that area and putting it into general office supplies is why that number had increased. Thank you for asking. That. Yeah, because, so, I and I, I'm not um, challenging you sure. on this, I just, I'm asking the question. Sure. Um, so it's just to try to to system uh, that makes sense to me around. i mean we're all about process and systems right and, and to level the playing field for the emerson wing as well that so that we have uh, an equal amount of supplies relative to the number of students so it's it's essentially student based so my question is when in the beginning of the school year when all the parents come in to the, and 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 we, we grab our little stickies yes. because there are additional supplies, supplies. That, the, that the classrooms need, which I can't believe we do, we have to do, but we do. Okay. Um, how does how do you do, how do those two work together? Are they completely separate? I, I I'm trying to figure that out because I, I don't. I, if you said this was going to replace the ask of the parents, I'd be like, okay. But if it's not to replace the ask, I just need to understand the relationship. We've, we've really whittled down the number that we ask of parents um, over the last several years. There, there, there are still asks in terms of supplies and uh, you know a, a binder that a student might have or uh, something specific to programs that they have. But, but we've tried to uh, consolidate a lot of that under our supply budget. So that number has really gone down, I think. Okay. That, that is helpful because that explains why. Because it's like, you know, and it's been a couple of years since I've been at school, but we have this like 20 different sure. stickies, sure. but then we're increasing the supply budget, budget. So if it's if it's not, if it's a one for one, I understand. So I think for the school committee's perspective, it's important to understand that while it looks like an increase, what I've done is essentially pull money out of the general uh, instructional supplies that teachers use for their grade levels and put it into the office supply like budget. a bucket it, yeah so you have more control over it yes yep understood uh, if I can just mention too just uh, this doesn't relate to your building but to, to our school committee friends you'll note that w especially when Pat comes to do the executive summary um, and w when someone like Tanya Rich will speak we've done this in a couple of different places where we've moved things I, I know that teaching and learning is the same where we've moved a couple of different things that were already in the budget but we moved it somewhere else like I mean Tanya Rich for example the line shows an 8100% increase well not really it was it was it used to be over here it's just not it's over That's here so it's housekeeping and a lot of that not this specific item but a lot of that was has been driven by our auditors as you know we've been working for the yeah. last couple of years to refine things and tighten things up and this is another one of those years where we're doing that yep yeah, makes so, sense thank awesome. you any other questions for yeah. speaking of housekeeping um, yeah. since this is the first time I'm looking at this book um, Florence Sawyer's K through eight, so I'm seeing K through okay. eight listed. Is it the same in the middle? Is it the same budget in the middle school section as well? Because I'm it's seeing one K through eight. I know, but I want to know if <coughs> these numbers are repeated or if these are no. additional asks in the different sections here. No. Nope. Okay, so you're. This is just here twice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Um, you asked Ross his priorities, but you didn't ask the other two. Okay. So one or two. What, what would be your number? If it's okay, Joel, I'm going to take Sean sure. first. The personnel request. Yeah. Um, um, just because. Yeah. What are your numbers that you're anticipating? Um, the what it's happened is um, we we added 50. I said students, so it's about six per grade level, and but uh, there's a huge cluster 
uh, at second grade level. We left at like 2021, 20, and all of a sudden we came back and we have 25 per room. You know what I mean? So yeah, it you're, would be to, you're at that to, point to break that into um, a, an additional. And then what? What then? This is going to roll into the middle school eventually. It, it, the, um, so when I started 10 years ago, we were 550, and we had four sections at each grade level. Um, in the past 10 years, that dropped to 450, and we dropped to about three sections per grade level. Um, we're now uh, about, about, this would make it half and half. We have four um, sections um, at three grade levels and three um, sections at three grade levels. So it doesn't, um, that keeps it, if it were to be three sections, um, it would, it, we're at good numbers going into the okay. middle school. All right. Thank yeah. you very much. And, and I think in terms of our priorities, continuing to provide the tools necessary to meet the goals of our school improvement plan. And so, you know, building our teachers and students' capacity in social emotional learning, I think is, is the biggest key for us right now. So of the asks, though. The professional development. Yeah, BD. And where is, why can't I find that? Which page? It's uh, uh, fourth page from the bottom. At fifth the bottom. from the bottom. Oh, there we go. Summary. Oh, okay. Got it. Thank you very much. All right, great. Thanks, guys. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. We are school, on so Joe, you might as well stay there for middle school. First, can I ask a quick question? Sure. Purpose of sure. No, as you're leaving, this is just a general question. There's a lot of new okay. staff requests for the district. Sure. And I wonder how um, <laughs> how and when staffing vacancies tie into um, Are you thinking retirements the new stuff? position? What, yeah, whatever, whether, whether a position is eliminated or there's retirement. So when does that get tied into our ability to, to meet those new staff requests? Why do I go through? It's really a, a continuous ebb and flow. It doesn't just happen like all at once, to be honest. And, and what you'll see is the administrators, the principals primarily, myself, Joanne, Marie, and Pat will get together and start to take a look at that. Um, I'm not sure if that's exactly because for example, this is not a, this is a hypothetical example. So, uh, we may find that we've got a, a small class, or we've got a teacher that's leaving uh, at the high school, but our need isn't there. Our need is over here, and we know that that's where our need is. And maybe, like, I mean, as you will listen to Sean, and I mean, 50 extra kids that we didn't count on this time last year—that's a lot of students in Lancaster. So you know the need is there. So we might look at that high school position and say, okay, we're not, we're gonna leave that. We're not gonna build that, but we are gonna add this. So that <coughs> comes through um, for us. It'll it'll come through in a probably next couple of weeks when we start to take a look at it. So that's taken into consideration when we're trying to meet those new staff requests. Oh yes, yeah. that's all part and parcel of this. But it is an ebb and flow throughout the year too. It, it's not just this time of year. We're constantly looking yeah. at that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank Our you. middle school principals. Welcome. The floor is yours. Yes, so uh, number one on a docket. Uh, and and it hurts. Yeah. And it hurts. <laughs> 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 um, on behalf of my colleagues, Mr. Gray and Mr. Bates, we just wanted to say thank you for the opportunity to present to you our proposed FY20 budgets for your consideration this morning. Um, we are eternally grateful for the continued support that we receive from the school committee and from our school-wide communities. And we know, as, our, as do our elementary principals, that it's because of this collective support that we continue to make growth towards important school and district-wide initiatives. We really believe that, and we just want to say thank you. Uh, each of our three middle schools are going to present requests to support unique needs for our school, our school community, um, based on our own school communities. Uh, and we're each going to take a moment to explain those individual requests to you, just like the elementary school principals did. Um, but it's our hope that across these unique needs, much like our elementary college, <coughs> great amount of consistency as we work together in collaboration and in alignment to ensure that all of our students in the district regardless of which town receive high quality learning experiences at each grade level. Two of these consistent requests are STEM scopes and our proposal to continue our phased in redesign of our library media center. Those are the first two bullets. Uh, the purchase and implementation of STEM scopes, again, much like our elementary colleagues, is consi consistent in terms of vertical alignment. 
this past year we had the STEM scopes science curriculum at grades six, seven, and eight under the direction of our Department of Teaching and Learning to great success. We would like to continue uh, the purchase of this program to support our science curriculum. We believe that's where we want to be with science education. It is tightly aligned to the next gener generation science standards. It has a hands-on investigative approach, which is exactly where we want to be. It's also complemented by a rigorous assessment component, which we know is critically important. So all three of us are submitting requests for the support of STEM scopes at the middle level as well. We are each working at the continued evolution of our library media centers. This is a phase in approach as we work to create open and collaborative learning spaces that are multi-purpose to support innovation and collaboration for our students. And so requests to support this process would include requests for multi-purpose furniture, multimedia tables, <coughs> and resources for maker space. And these requests are supported in both the district-wide facilities and district-wide technology budget. So we wanted to point that out to you. That's those two consistent requests. I don't know if anyone has any questions about those two. So then we're going to move on to our individual <coughs> proposals for our school-wide budgets into my favorite topic. No offense, <coughs> Luther Burbank <laughs> Middle School. Um, Luther Burbank does not have any um, additional staffing requests for the FY20 budget proposed to you. Uh, with that said, I'd just like to make a special note of appreciation for the addition of our assistant principal position that was supported in the FY19 budget. Um, our new assistant principal, Mr. Grant, is working tirelessly, as we knew he would, uh, working directly with students and staff to help us continue uh, to grow. And so thank you for that support. You had a great mentor. Yeah. <laughs> our non-salary requests at Luther Burbank really are not significant in nature. They're really intended to maintain our current growth in curriculum and instruction <laughs> and enrichment. In terms of our requests related to technology, we're now fully implemented in the one-to-one -one model uh, with our sixth and seventh and eighth graders all having Chromebooks which they're taking to and from school. Uh, extremely positive feedback from both our students and from our parents and our teachers are working incredibly hard to integrate technology to support student learning for learning purposes. You'll note that uh, as a result of this one-to-one -one implementation, we are seeing a decrease in a reduction <coughs> in our need for print consumables and textbooks. And so you will see a decrease in our textbook line at Luther Burbank because of that. We are now uh, in year three of implementation of our workshop model for reading and writing at Burbank as well. We're really proud of that work. And so requests to support literacy <coughs> in a workshop continue with a request this year to support text sets, uh, supporting interdisciplinary connections, as Mr. O'Shea mentioned, which we know are critically important for students to be able to synthesize their learning across content areas. As well, we would like to support uh, a new author study unit and a classic, classic text study unit in sixth and seventh grade, respectively. <coughs> so we're excited about that. In terms of enrichment and extracurriculars, we have a request in our budget to support a new electric piano for our music program. Uh, our music program has grown pretty substantially. Uh, and uh, in, in fact, it's grown in numbers 25% in the past three years, just in terms of <coughs> overall participation. And our jazz and chorus band has doubled and tripled in participation. We're excited about that growth. We are in need of a new electric <coughs> piano. Our current piano is 18 years old. And our amazing music teacher tells me that the speakers are blown and it can only play on one volume, which is high. And <laughs> oh, of course it is. <laughs> in her very professional manner, it's, it's very difficult to teach pitch recognition uh, on one volume. So I believe her. Leave me out of my wheelhouse, but I believe her. 
Um, so we have a, a request to support that. As well, uh, and finally, we have a re request to support an additional extracurricular activity that would be creative writing that supports where we are at Luther Burbank in terms of literacy. We're currently running that program this year with very high numbers of so, uh, 25 and above students on a weekly basis. It's not a stipending position, so we would like to include that as a stipending position next year. Our current participation numbers for extracurriculars for students we're also really proud of. We have 74% of our student body participating in a, at least one extracurricular intramural or interscholastic sport. So we thank you for the support of those because we know being involved at middle school level is very, very important. I'm so glad to hear you say that. It really because is. Because I've heard a lot of swirl about let's cut the sports budget to fund some other budget. I don't think people realize Those that these towns <laughs> don't have a heck of a lot for kids to do after school. So I'm really <coughs> glad to hear you say that. I hope people latch on to that number. Yeah, students have the ability to develop those pro-social skills in support of structured environments and get to know who they are. Yeah. Uh, that's what middle school is all about. Thank you. So that's the conclusion of Luther Burbank budget and I'm happy to answer any questions and just overall. What's your number say, one? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. What's your number one? I would say uh, the top two bullet points that are consistent with my colleagues, the STEM scopes uh, for our to support our science curriculum as well as the continued evolution of uh, our media space which really supports our digital learning plan and where we are with technology integration so I'd say those are definitely my top two. Would you take a donation on an electric piano and get it off the budget? I'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Luther Burbank Middle School and Mrs. Friend? Okay, Mr. <coughs> Grady. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> um, I first just want to say uh, thank you. It is really, truly a pleasure to work at Hale Middle School. It's a fabulous place to learn. It's a fabulous place to work. We've got uh, amazing teachers like Mr. Keeveny, who's over here, probably serving a dual role right now. But, but Mr. Keeveny is an example of you know a veteran teacher who's doing amazing things at Hale. I invite all of you guys to come and visit us, uh, even if it's just for an hour or so, to see the things that, that are happening within the walls of our school. So um, with that, I, I, I will remind you that last year we reduced our budget by about 11%. And I'm coming back this year with my hat in my hand asking for some very specific increases to support the things that we're doing at Hale. Um, what you will see um, very clearly, uh, unlike my two colleagues, is that I'm asking for some salary increases. Um, those salary requests are for a 0.4 assistant principal and a 0.5 literacy specialist. Um, should we be honored with the, uh, the option to have an assistant principal, that person would really serve in, uh, would have three very specific roles. That would be to assist in supervision and evaluation of staff, to assist in daily discipline matters that come up, and uh, to, again, to assist in the supervision of after-school events and activities, which we've seen grow uh, quite considerably in the last two years. Um, the 0.5 literacy specialist, it is currently uh, a position that is shared with center. The, the teacher spends half of her time at center and half of her time at Hale. And what we've seen <coughs> in the last year <coughs> significant increase in students who need literacy support. And that's sometimes a push-in model where the teacher is pushing into a classroom, but often it's a pull-out model as well where students are getting specific services outside of the classroom. And uh, quite honestly, that it's very challenging to manage a person who's split between two buildings, being that our schedules are very different. Um, we were able to do so last year. However, this year has become more challenging because our numbers have increased. Um, so looking ahead to what we have, and that is a continuing a growing enrollment in our, in our district, uh, specifically in Stowe, we really needed uh, a, a literacy specialist to support, to support those students um, and their learning needs. So um, that is the reasons behind the point five request. Um, the non-salary requests that you see, uh, there's a, sh a small increase in our uh, contracted services. 
Um, we were caught off guard this year with a student who had basically moved into the district and was tested out of all of our, the maths that we offer. And so um, we had to uh, come up with some money <coughs> to support something called the CTY, the Center for, Center for Talented Youth, which is an online program uh, through Johns Hopkins. Thank you. Um, so you'll see an increase there to support that. <coughs> um, you'll also see a request for increase in our, in our PD line and that is to support some building-based professional development around social emotional learning and differentiated instructional practices. That's where we'll just we'll have folks come in and work with our faculty and staff to improve the way that we improve the way we teach. Um, what you also notice is that um, we have some a, a significant increase in our after-school clubs and activities. Um, the reason for that is we we made an intentional effort in the past year to grow our after-school programs, and I'm grateful that we have been able to do that. We were able to do so because we received just under ten thousand dollars from a Mabel Hale grant. That grant will be exhausted in July. We'll have used that, which was our goal, was to use it over the course of two years to go and grow our program. So now that we've grown that program, I'd like to support it systemically um, by folding those costs into our, our operating budget. Awesome. Thank you, Kyle. Any questions for Principal yeah. Brady? I do. Questions before I go? <coughs> Mike? Um, Kyle, is the, is the point four role, um, uh, assistant principal role, is that a, a is that going to be staffed by an existing member who will shift responsibilities, or is that exclusively one staff member at, at point four? So that would be a new a new request for a point four. I, um, I, I, we have some potential um, candidates for the position, um, but I can't say for certain unless it was posted. Um, so it could end up being that someone on staff currently would go into that position, and then we would need to fill their, their vacancy, that one point of vacancy. Right. Okay. Elaine, did you have a question? Uh, yeah, I had a, a couple questions. Um, you have a science consumables line. <coughs> is that the STEM scopes increase? Is that what the increase is here? Yes. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, the Center for Talented, Talented Growth. <coughs> Center for Talented Youth, CTY Center for Talented Youth through John Youth, Hopkins, I'm so. sorry, youth. Um, <coughs> so I would, like, this is a, this is a message to you. I would love to see one of those programs across the district anyway, but not an online one, a concerted one. It, it, is this software or an individual? So it's, we, we actually all have a student um, in our building. I think we have yeah. one or two. One. One. We, each, we each have a student in our buildings <coughs> who are, are participating in this uh, Center for Talented Youth. It's an online geometry course, an online honors geometry course. Um, and it's largely because those those students have they've exceeded everything right. that we can offer. Um, the there's there's an online component, but then there's also in the evenings there's often um, these uh, video components where they're actually checking in with the teacher. Uh, they're logging in. Other students from around the country who are taking the same course will also also log in. Um, there's a, we receive regular reports from the the teacher of the course. Uh, you know, individually, I, I don't see you know, either, either one of their students' reports, but we see our own students' report. Um, I, I, I tend to get them on a bi-weekly basis, where it's checking in, telling us what you know, what, what she's working on, what she needs to improve on, her scores. Uh, okay. Does so that it answer your question? I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Go does, ahead. does that answer your question? Yeah, it, it does. Because it seems like short money for something that, I'll, albeit in the situation you're in, it's a band-aid. Right? right, and I think as as things evolve and you start to see more kids who need that, I mean that's part of our charter is to make sure that all students are. Um, I can't say we're working with teaching and learning to try to address that. We've been having multiple discussions about how we, we can do something more um, uh, in the favor of our students versus going to an outside contract. Right, right, but and, and I understand that launching a program takes a little more thoughtful, you know, development. So that answers that question. And then on the Mabel Hale thing, we knew we were gonna be here, right? We knew we were gonna end up at this place. And I remember, Lynn, it was you that <coughs> asked a lot of questions on this. It's been a long time. <laughs> it has been a long time. It's been a year or two, I can't remember. And I remember you coming to the table and saying, I don't need anything. And I thought, oh, <laughs> here he is. <laughs> I remember me, I was such a good guy before. <laughs> 
so so the programs that you're so here and and don't again my questions are not to challenge my questions are to understand mm -hmm. so the programs that you are talking about now are programs that you had initiated for your particular school my question is if we're being asked to fund these programs because the medieval hail has now run out are those programs that are similar to programs in the other two schools or will we find and I don't want you guys to go oh I want to support my peers so I mean anything you know I, I really need to understand it or are is this something where we need to be looking with an eye to the future in elevating those other two schools to ensure parity so I think we were playing catch up to be honest with you um, and I didn't want to come last year and ask for ten thousand dollars to support a program if i wasn't certain that that program was going to be successful so we were able to secure the grant and now we can see i just met with the director of randall library and she's asking where are all the middle school kids why aren't they coming to the randall library anymore and it's because they're staying after school for the programs that were running within our buildings which is exactly what we want right. as far as students being connected to teachers students being connected to their school so you know, we're, we're playing a bit of catch up. I think the numbers are a little bit different when you compare the three buildings, and I think that's that's probably because we're, we have a larger size of, of students. You know, we're, we're, we're bigger um, than the other two middle schools. Really? Yes. What are your numbers? We're just under 300. And what about you folks? We're at 250. Just about two, 244, actually. <laughs> okay. So we're playing catch up to get those after school programs running like the other two middle schools already had. Last year was a concerted effort to do so without a request. Okay. Those programs are now running, they're successful. We have teachers who are invested in those programs. This was a goal of mine last year. We've achieved that goal and now I'm coming asking to continue to run these programs by providing the And they're staying at school. This is and they're at goodness. school, they wanna be at school. They're after school for lengthy periods of time. You know, doing the things that we want them to do. Is that what you guys have taught us over the years? Um, so what's your number one ask? It's, it's really tough, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I know, but life sucks, so... Oh, I said that. <laughs> I mean, I feel, like I, need the, I feel like I need the assistant principal position, really, to continue to do the things that we're doing at Hale. But the professional development component, um, I think, you know, we also need that, the social and emotional learning, the training that our staff needs to, to continue to grow. Um, so I'm polled, you know, one of them I think is a need for the building, and I think one is a need for our staff and myself. So if I had to put it down, though, I would probably say right now the point for assistant principal is probably our greatest need. And what about the, the letter, literacy specialist? How, what would you do if you didn't have that, that resource? If we, were, we would just have to make do it. Um, if we don't get that resource, we'll have to go, have to go back with Ross. We'll have to do some you know, tricky scheduling. Um, we might have to pull her into our building a little bit more than she is currently and a little bit less at Hale, I mean, at, at Center. Um, that's something that I have to sit down with Principal Walker and, and <coughs> not during the summer. And, and yeah, summer. I mean, that's worth a discussion. Okay, right. thank you. Anything else? Thank you so much. So again, uh, <coughs> I'd like to thank the committee for this opportunity to lay out our uh, budget requests for your consideration. Um, again, I, I want to echo what my colleagues have uh, discussed already with regard to our library media centers. We're really excited about the work that uh, is being done, the progress that we've made, the progress that we continue to make. In having these spaces evolve into 21st century learning spaces, maker spaces, um, common spaces for engaging with the world around them, it's 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 not um, it's not the library of our childhood. They they are um, uh, high tech areas. They are comfortable. They are engaging. Uh, they are filled with uh, exciting resources uh, and stories. And we're, we continue to build um, uh, our nonfiction collections as well, both uh, in terms of hard copy, uh, book, actual books, but also in terms of the digital uh, footprints. And, um, and, and our requests across the board uh, reflect that. Uh, with regard to Florence Sawyer School, uh, in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, as Mrs. Friend said, we've, we've had a continued <coughs> Uh, decrease in our ask in terms of the textbook line item as uh, as we continue to look at our digital uh, the, the, the digital environment in which our students uh, work 
What you will see in terms of Florence Sawyer School is additional money in that textbook line, but that's to build uh, the resources uh, for to complement our teachers in the workshop model that Mrs. Friend presented to you a couple of weeks ago. Uh, where we have uh, we have not requested for additional staffing uh, at the middle level either. Uh, in terms of our non-salary requests, uh, there is an increase in our other line uh, for our science department. <coughs> the, our school is in our 20, we'll be going into our 22nd year and uh, it's uh, high time to get some new microscopes. So we're requesting uh, 10 new microscopes uh, and they're, 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 they're not as inexpensive as they were when I, I think when I was a student. So uh, that's, that's, uh, that's, a, that's almost $4,000 in terms of new microscopes. Um, and I think to echo Mr. Grady's comments um, and Mrs. Friends, that you know we're we're incredibly proud of our middle schools' uh, offerings of extracurricular activities. Um, it, it's it's a high priority for me as principal for our faculty. Uh, I'm I'm incredibly grateful of the work that they take on. Um, uh, and and provide just you know, innovative ways to give students an opportunity to shine and to explore passion that they have in language arts and in STEM activities and uh, our coding club and um, and yet when you look at our budget there's a, there's a decrease <coughs> there and that's not because we're offering less but um, uh, Director Rago that you'll hear from Extended Learning has been continuing to try to offer. Uh, uh, district-wide programs in terms of extended learning for our middle school students and so we don't want to have duplicative programs um, things like debate for example uh, is, is one that extended learning has taken on that we had offered in the past um, our model UN club had been a parent-run activity and uh, extended learning is um, you know, looking at those kinds of things, and we're really excited about the uh, the building modules that they're uh, exploring right now. That we had uh, extended learning, and, uh, and Mr. Romer came through all of our middle schools, and the response and the excitement from the kids was incredible. So, yeah, it's, we are proud of the offerings that we have for our <coughs> for our students before and after school. Uh, in our case, before as well, because we start a little bit later. Um, it's, there is rarely a time from 7 to 5 when there aren't kids moving around the building and, and that's because of the support that you give us and we are incredibly grateful for that. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Mike? Hi Joel, just uh, real quick, it, it, looked, <coughs> excuse me, it looked like the professional development ask um, for Florence Order was specified in the description and significantly higher than that of um, uh, Luther Burbank and Hale. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that's a specific professional development that you have in mind. Mm -hmm. Yep, so th the ask is uh, pre-K through 8, so uh, I think it's probably not that different uh, from Rollinson and Burbank combined or Hale and Center combined. Where it is a little outsized is working with um, Cognitive Connections and, and bringing in presenters to work with our students, our, our teachers next year on executive function strategies. And, and this is an area where um, we feel that it would both support our school improvement plan and also complement a lot of the great work that uh, um, Director DeAngelis is, is working on with um, and leading that effort for the district as well. <coughs> on that vein, you both mentioned um, additional PD for social-emotional type mm -hmm. um, work. How similar is it across the two, and what are what are you doing? So, sort of, what is the parity, or what are the differences? Because I know you want to be specific to your own building, but also, is there any similarities across the building? Yeah, I, and so I think getting to common ground uh, on any initiative requires looking at what we do well and where we can be better from an individual standpoint. And um, and I think Luther Burbank probably had I don't know maybe a little bit ahead of us in terms of the professional development in this particular area. So social emotional learning is is a much wider uh, uh, umbrella, and I think this is one area where we feel like we can gain some traction and support those overall uh, larger initiatives. If 
I can just mention too, I think um, to our school committee members, <coughs> you'll see some of this discussion now start to come up because you'll see a definite focus for us as a school district over the next two years in this very area. So you'll see that ultimately you're going to see that all of this is going to tie into that broader plan for the next two years. So what's your number one for the middle school? <coughs> Well, I, I know this is a really, it's, yeah. a, it's not well, a fair it, question. It, no, but it is. I think, it's a, I think it's a fine question. I appreciate the opportunity to say it publicly. I, I you know, I would look for continued. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I would look for continued support for our extracurricular activities. Uh, yeah. We're incredibly proud of the, the, the many ways that we can extend our day for our students. Um, and so from a philosophical standpoint, I, I would like to continue to, to support the teachers um, uh, support of those programs. Um, and from a practical standpoint, we need new microscopes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks Wonderful. so much, Thank folks. you. Thank you very much. And we are right on time. Yeah, we are. Steve, yeah, we are. Steve, <coughs> can go in. We will ask the principal, D. Domenico, to come forward and present for our high school. He has, to, he has to do it all alone. He has to do He is a standalone <laughs> man here. Yes. This poor man needs support, so let's hear what he's got to say. Well, good morning, everyone. Good, good morning. morning. <laughs> I'm so glad to be able to be here with you. And uh, Not really, but... <laughs> yeah, I am. Mean, I think this is, a, this is a terrific thing for all of us to be able to speak to uh, what's going on in our schools and, and what's, what we're looking forward to. I know, uh, just taking a look at, at, uh, at last year's budget, I just want to say uh, thank you. Um, your support resulted in our English department uh, receiving the necessary PD to extend the reader's workshop that's going on, uh, the great work that's going on in the elementary and middle schools to extend it into the high schools. And that's, um, that has really been the, um, terrific to see. I know our teachers appreciate it. It's also now, looking at this year's budget, it's um, 8,000 off the books for English PD. Um, also, we our new kiln, uh, has really allowed our ceramics program to, to blossom. We have now get to, uh, the first semester, which just finished uh, this past week. There were uh, four sections of ceramics running, and um, you know the old war horse uh, had to be put up to pasture uh, at the end of last year, and uh, so we're very fortunate to, to have a new kiln. Um, and, uh, something that uh, I tried to pay attention to, and uh, and was a real focus for scheduling this this current year was uh, looking at class sizes. And um, we've really tried to um, pay attention and be mindful uh, when scheduling uh, our class sizes. I think we've shifted a significant portion of our core <coughs> academic standard classes into what I call the sweet spot. Uh, now there's a, you know, in that range of 21 to 25 students. Um, we have far fewer classes running in the high teens number. Uh, there are still some, some individual classes uh, because of their uniqueness that are running at, at low numbers, but I really feel like uh, it's been a concerted effort across our, our school to, to look at class size. Uh, that being said, you know, looking down the road, um, next year will be the last, it looks like it's going to be the last year of a, of a decline in enrollment, which has been about over the course of about five years. And then we're anticipating after next year that enrollment will start to uh, get up to uh, close to a, a thousand students or more. So um, we'll see that spike probably in, the, not next year, but the year after. Uh, with that in mind, uh, the, the requests this year are largely around uh, staff. Um, there's a, a, a dean of students position uh, that we are interested in. Um, looking to be, I think whenever you deal with student life, you try to be proactive rather than simply reactive, uh, and such a position will allow us uh, to do more of that. And then uh, the point six physics position, um, there's been a change to our science program as a result of some changes in MCAS testing. So um, bringing on a, a point six physics teacher would allow us to uh, address needs at the grade nine level. 
uh, point six Spanish teacher. Point two. Is it point two business? Uh, point Spanish. Three Spanish. I'm sorry. I was just running down my list. Sorry. Here, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, but I'm looking at the slide that uh, that you have now. Yes, point two business. Um, <coughs> we've got uh, a teacher we'd like to move to a full-time uh, position. She's got a strong background in economics and finance, and I think uh, uh, bringing her on board full-time would allow us to uh, to make that. <coughs> um, the Spanish position. Uh, when we look at our course our class sizes in our core academic area uh, areas, excuse me, um, the Spanish classes are the uh, that's the, that's the um, content area that has the most sections over 26 students. I mean, that's, that's, that's where we're really feeling the pinch uh, in those Spanish classes. Um, and then a, a point to English uh, instructor would allow us to uh, continue to explore some options for upper level students, uh, grade 12 students. Okay, are we good? Yes. Okay, I have a few questions. Sure. Um, so, and this is less for you and more for the administration, um, on the enrollment creep. So, uh, we have what, nine, how many do you have now? No, uh, 980. Okay, we have 980 now. Just a few years ago, we had well over 1,000. So I'm not as sensitive to the volume, the number of students. I'm more concerned about the makeup of the students and the supports you need for the students that are there because to me the numbers are almost when you get at the administrative level almost irrelevant when you're when you're getting between a hundred kids and I know that sounds like oh come on lady you're not in the school but <coughs> the point in, in that is is this Dean role really to address um, behavior issues and put in more structure is that what it's the for? The simple answer is yes, and what it will allow is for um, current assistant principals to do more of the work that I want them uh, to focus on around instruction, uh, around curriculum. Okay. So, All right. So it's an enabler to <coughs> do additional education. So so then we tried something last year, right? We, we, we took the third assistant and we moved the third assistant out. But it looks like we do need something there. Yes, okay. that's exactly what you're saying. What is this additional, how would the additional function support the staff in the building? Or would it? Well, I think anytime um, the connection between student behavior and staff needs, uh, when a staff has a concern, uh, of course, um, they have some immediate communication. Uh, making sure that, that concern is addressed <coughs> quickly and then whatever resolution is found is communicated to them. Uh, I think that's probably the number one thing I, I think staff appreciates. Okay. All right. And um, I think that's it. What's that? Can I follow up on just what you were saying? Absolutely. I'm just wondering because we've never had a dean of students, right? Right. We've had a third assistant principal, but we just haven't. But this is, this is being, <coughs> this is a different title, so it, it, it's almost telling me that the, the function is going to be a little bit different. So is there a job description for this? Well, no, we wouldn't be able to do that uh, unless it's approved and included and then yeah, the process right. starts. Yeah, that's right, we would have to go down. Right now, at, for, at this, is, this infancy is stage. It's philosophical right now, right? It's, yeah. they have issues, well, they have a need, not issues, we all have issues. <laughs> I have issues. Um, they have a need for um, additional <coughs> supports for the students. And I want to be cautious, too, because my comment about discipline isn't uh, the heavy-handed discipline, mm -hmm. it's ensuring that the kids have what they need to support yes. what they're doing. Okay. And I think at this level, too, um, it's uh, what we're really looking for is his vision and how it ties in. You know, uh, and so I, I still feel strongly that that building needs the three, in, in some form or another, a, a layer of three administrators. So uh, you also mentioned um, <coughs> the, the classroom size, which is going to become an issue. Oh, and by the way, my one of my other po points on the um, the enrollment was we didn't really reduce the staffing in the high school based on the number of students. That, you know, the, the 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 decrease in student population over the last five or six years, comparatively. I, I know that we there were a couple of sections of classes that we did not 
continue. Right. But we haven't done a one for one. No, we didn't take a look at We never looked at it like that in terms of, if this is where you're asking, I think it is, where you look at a, st a student staff ratio and say, oh, geez, we're trying to get to this number. That's never how we've worked. It's always been the needs and, you know, and some of those smaller classes, because that was something the school committee had asked three years ago for me to take a look at those numbers. And you'll recall I printed out all those sheets and we've been monitoring those all year long and um, again like every year so it has never been to try to get to some place no. it's always been about the needs and where we saw the the numbers of students shifting between uh, <coughs> classes and courses. Right, and I understand that but the 26 kids in a Spanish class and foreign language which is challenging enough as it is well they all are but um, my, my, you know, I know what I would want to see you select as your number one, but I mean, you've got a lot of needs at that school, and frankly, yeah. you know, one of my challenges to you is going to be where can the district reduce its ask in order to support the high school? Because I think this year, I think the high school really needs some love. So, what's your number one request? You, know, I mean, you look at all these, and I, I think any, um, any principal is going to tell you um, that the number one needs have to be direct connection to the students. So you're going to look at the instructional pieces there. Do we need a, a, an additional, some additional administrative uh, support? Yes, but we're going to look at the teaching first, uh, whether it's the physics teacher, the Spanish teacher, whatever. Those are, those are the number one things. Okay. If you take a look at what he's asking for, if you just do the ad, now it doesn't, again, it doesn't work like this. It's not a big ask from my lens when you take a look at the instructional piece. I mean, a point six, a point two. You're not even uh, two teachers are even combining to one FTE yet. Do you know what I mean? So you're really asking well, yeah. for less than one. And I don't think it needs FTE. to be justified. I'm not asking no, I to justify. Yeah, I didn't think that. No, uh, because I I think when it when it impacts the kids directly, then that's priority number one. So I really appreciate you saying that. It's kind of like consistent for everyone. Lynn, I just a quick question. Um, with the lower numbers, I'm, I'm, have you always had 26 or a large number in Spanish? Because I know that there's more shifting towards German, um, and I don't know what other languages you have, but so, yeah, so um, have they always been that large? No. Uh, I think last year saw a couple of factors that we anticipated would happen. Um, one, we had very we had low, very low, and declining numbers in our Latin <coughs> program last year, and it necessitated the, the um, Kind of staggered elimination of that program. It simply could not be sustained over, over time. So even though those numbers are small now, those those students are now choosing another language, mm -hmm. you know, those few students. Um, and then we also had a uh, Spanish teacher uh, at the end of last year uh, leave, and we did not fill that position. Um, so m most of the, the larger and by larger, I mean 26 or above sections are at the uh, Spanish two or three level. That's okay. what we're seeing. Okay. We want to make sure that we stay on time. No, we do, but I want to make sure these guys. I, we may end up forfeiting right. our break, folks. Taking a quick two-minute break. You, you have a question. I just have a really quick question. Um, Thank you. <clears throat> a lot of the the increases, you know, obviously are for like new textbooks. Yep. And then we hear from you know, the elementary and middle school principals, we need fewer textbooks because we're using more digital materials. And I'm not saying, you know, mm -hmm. that, that that's necessarily what would work for kids, say, in AP chemistry, you know, or whatever. But can you talk a little bit about that and, and what you're looking for, sort of? In, in I can. Areas? I have this discussion with uh, with department chairs every year when, when the ask comes. And, and now that I think that they anticipate it and they say, I've also looked into the online uh, text. <laughs> um, unfortunately, what we're seeing at the high school level is, um, there hasn't necessarily been a, uh, a decrease in cost. Uh, you know, I, I, maybe I'm being naive, I would, I would assume a, uh, a bound textbook would cost more than an online uh, version, uh, but we're not seeing, we're not seeing uh, such great savings. Uh, some, some courses, you mentioned some of the AP courses, um, really ne necessitate uh, having that textbook available to students based on that curriculum. Um, but it's something that I always talk at length with my department chairs about. And um, after this meeting, I'll revisit it with them again and say, because when we submitted this budget, of course, in, I want to say it was 
November, sometime around November, they're still in the process of investigating uh, the cost of those books. So um, I, I have no problem going back to them <coughs> and sitting down with them. I like seeing items. that line item, actually, to tell you the truth, I think. I think it's, I think it's important. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was going to bring this up as to put on the running tally of things that maybe we should discuss more overall, because I hate to sound like Neil Darcy, but I think it's a, we need to continue that discussion from last year about the subscriptions versus the textbooks and where this is all headed and the Chromebooks yeah, are fit and Neil Darcy did a lot of wonderful things, so thanks. <laughs> um, all right, so um, I will, I definitely will add that. I, I think, too, we would just want to, and I don't want to go down the rat hole here, but I think we would just want to make sure that we're identifying what is it we want to get out of that discussion is when textbook, when online makes sense. Does that help? Yeah. Kind of clarify what we're going to be looking for? Yeah, I think okay. maybe maybe long term, maybe after the budget discussion when we talk about planning for the future, maybe we put a, a bigger picture in place of, of what we want to do as a district and how we're going to move there, but that's a not okay. for budget season. Yeah. Right now. Well, we can, we can start to have that discussion. So the impact us because there's a there's a lot of asks here. So good point. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Oh, what's your number one, Paul? <laughs> well, oh, he already said yeah, that. He did. He, did. Yeah. he already he said that. He wants his yeah. teachers. Teaching person. Teaching personnel requests. He wants his teachers, man. <laughs> We will invite uh, our director of pupil and personnel services to come forward. Thank you, school principals. <laughs> this is the Angeles. So nice to have you. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks for having me this morning. Whoa. It's nice that? to see the sun, too. You better launch into this because I'm seeing a big request. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> the heck is that? Let's go, sister. Roll. Um, I just wanted to start with the overview of the 240 grant and remind you we made some revisions to that grant last year. Um, we actually moved um, <coughs> the paraprofessional salaries out and into the regular budget. And what we did was, because transportation is a reimbursable um, expenditure, we moved that into the grant. We actually had that discussion last year too, to be honest right. with you, around so this table. So I just wanted to do a so, reminder about yeah. that. So, that so why don't you just give a quick brief overview because there are, we have new folks on the committee who don't know what you're referencing. Right, that's why I wanted to, I was rewinding to talk okay. a little bit about last year that we had made that change. Okay. So um, there was $716,000 that was allocated in the 240 grant this year for um, in-district and out-of-district transportation. Which leaves a deficit of what that we have to cover through the budget? There was no, there was no ask in the budget, so, um, which is now really a concern because I think that the reason for the increase in transportation, we had to put additional vehicles on the road because we need more specialized transportation handicap accessible vehicles um, cost more per day and per year and we've had to add that this year so I have concerns about that going forward because um, I suspect that we will not be able to um, meet that budget expectation this year as I've looked at it over you know from July until this point um, transportation is going to go over because of those the need for those specialized vehicles so that's why I've asked for an additional hundred thousand um, dollars for the transportation and the regular budget, and we'll continue to put the other reimbursable under the two forty. So you don't have any need for additional <coughs> staffing? No. Um, I asked for an increase in speech services. Um, point two, I think Principal O'Shea um, summarized the number of new students that have moved in. Uh, we have been able to. We had. Um, 38 new students move into the district just this year alone. We've had an increase in OT, um, PT, and speech services. I've been able to kind of shift um, people around to make caseloads manageable, but we cannot. We were not able to meet the speech. It's been extremely difficult. We just did not have the personnel. We have two part-time speech people at Mary Wilson and one at Luther Bourbon. So I'm looking to get one more day a week to cover those services for speech. We don't really have an option to not cover transportation. Right. So I think that's an important um, fact that we all need to be aware of. I mean, in your area, we don't have an option to not cover a lot, not that we wouldn't want to, but it's a big ask, but um, 
it's, it's also I'm, just, I'm bringing it forward because I don't want to underestimate, but I'm really worried about it because I know I'm not going to meet that expectation this year. And I know that you. At it. I understand that you can't <coughs> define what it is. I'm always very skeptical of big fat round numbers because I, mm -hmm. uh, and I and I know that it's a point, uh, a line in the sand. Um, what I always and this is irrespective of you. But what I always get concerned about is as we go through the budget process and we start to approve or not approve and then things come in and they're less, we never really know, but they're carried through in the next year's budget. And I know you've heard me say this year over year and you get tired of hearing it, but that's one of the things that I feel really the school committee needs to stay on is where, where did we ask for things last year? Where did it fall short? And sometimes things get lost in translation to the following year. Um, this one, I'm not picking on it. It's just because it's a big fat round number. There's more opportunity. It could go, it could be much more than what you're asking too. We just don't know, and we don't know in your area because you don't know who's moving into town. That's right. Right. So, so. it's a moving target, and I really looked at it across from July until now, and I know right now what I have in the budget, I cannot support the transportation line right now. So I. I, you know, I'm cautious going forward because we don't plan for this money that I have to come back and say, where is the funding going to come for transportation? And I know I've had to put more vehicles on the road. Is that your your biggest request? <coughs> yes. Okay. I would also point out to you that we're, uh, in part as a result of this, we're finding that the need for somebody to coordinate because it's becoming it's, it's enormous what's having to happen right now in our offices. Between your office and, and the fabulous work that Michelle Cody does, we're, we're getting to almost a tipping point if we're not already there because it's so complex. So I just want to put that on the table as well. So what's the coordinator for? Well, no, she's no, not, not asking talking about, for I'm it. Saying that, I'm not uh, saying that at this moment in time. I'm just saying transportation <coughs> is complicated. It's, and it's very a, complicated. It's a moving target. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to share with us? Sure. So if there was a reduction in out-of-district tuition, so you can see that. Congratulations and thank you. <laughs> um, you know, I think a couple of factors play into that. One is we have some students that are graduating successfully, which is always exciting, and um, that are moving on. But we also um, have developed new programs, and we have very strong programs in the district. And I listen to all my principal colleagues and because of them and the cultures that they're building, we have really successfully integrated students with the right supports in all of our schools. Um, I was at Center this week and we welcomed a student this week and I left tearful because I just, we brought a student into the building and we are servicing that student very well and I think that our rich programming um, has really supported students, you know, not only getting the supports that they need, but also the curriculum they need in order to be successful in the <coughs> communities. Um, and I know I was at the school committee a couple weeks ago, so if at any time you want to come and take a little tour, um, I've asked the principal to maybe welcome you so you could actually see some of the new programs that are in the district because um, our faculty, our regular ed faculty, our special ed faculty are working very well together. Um, I listened to Principal D. Domenico talk about, you know, the physics ask. So part of that visit sex is to really support the students um, at the high school that have been challenged by the science curriculum. And we have worked together to come up with a co-taught model so that a special ed teacher and a physics teacher can work together so we can really support students um, around that content that's very challenging. So very exciting. we're doing a lot of work together. You've heard a lot about the <coughs> teaching today. We have been working on those initiatives to really bring rich curriculum to our students. So it's really exciting work. Good for you. Thank we you. Keep doing that integration. <coughs> so, do good. Yeah. So the only other thing I had on the slide was the preschool. I just wanted to make you aware of the grants that are available, um, and the you know the funding and the support for the pre-K. The 298 grant was moved from EEC to DESE, and it was just recently released. So um, we'll be applying for that grant, and that's professional development for preschool um, faculty and staff members. Um, the 262 grant continues to support para salaries in the preschool. Our 237 grant, the community partnership grant, um, funds our early childhood coordinator and our play groups throughout the community. Um, and our, I just I wanted to mention grants because I think it's important. I've talked about these reductions of grants, so. 
the 391 grant um, Pat and I have just submitted to um, this week um, supports preschool teacher salaries this is the last grant last year that that grant will be available so I guess I don't want there to be surprises when I come next year and say they've limited it to you know 26 <laughs> 558 um, and then we're talking about increased costs um, the 274 grant which was in the slide prior they eliminated that two years ago and I've had to put PD that's our professional development money um, for special education and developing a programming so I've had to reserve money through the 240 grant there so found a, you know a placeholder to continue to provide rich professional development um, but it worries me that I'm not sure year to year what grants are going to be supported and allowed so I want to mention it to you now because I don't want you to be surprised next year if I come and say to you you know this grants that was going to be my question to you is what's at risk uh, uh, in the grants that you're currently yeah, receiving? Yeah, so the 391, we just submitted that. This is the final year for that grant, so we will not have that grant available next year. So when you do come forward with your ask next year, it shouldn't be the fully loaded FTE. It would be the, I know, there's a th theme here, but I, I just worry that we're, we have to be so cognizant mm -hmm. of what we're spending and making sure that it's going in the places that it really needs to right. go. Right, right. And so my, my two big asks are the transportation, because I already know we're under budget this year, and I, I'm tremendously worried about that. Um, the speech services is something that we really need, especially um, at Mar Mary Rollinson and Burbank. Um, we're really struggling to cover those services comprehensively. Okay. Great. Any other quick questions, Lynn? So these grants are grants that they're definite? No, yeah. nothing's a definite. They have them for this year except the last Those one, Those right? are the grants that we have for this year, but we, we do. know that the 391, this is the final year. Okay. And so uh, I'm, I'm kind of wondering why SPED is doing grants for pre-K, unless pre-K is a SPED. That is a SPED yeah. program. It's integrated. It's the it's integrated, integrated, integrated program. That was the whole thing that we went through last year. No, because uh, the other question is, so there is no, is there one for K? Are there grants for K? No. No. So there are no grants for K? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep up the grants and the numbers right here. <laughs> you mentioned a grant that covers early childhood coordinator, but that's zeroed out here in the budget for next year. So can you explain that? The early childhood coordinator has a dual role. So the community partnership grant offsets that salary. The early childhood, um, there's $22,000 of this grant that offsets that early childhood slash teen chair for the preschool. Okay, but it's it says zero for on the for next year's budget for early childhood coordinator so both listed as field piece. It's it's split separately in the grant offset page that's in the section one. Um, we just have it. So what might be helpful? My, my question is: Is there no early childhood coordinator anymore? No. There is. Oh, there is. It's just like, yeah, it's, it's just how, it's how, how, it's how it's it's got it's got So yeah, what would be helpful is if you guys could put in the description line item, sure. what just explain yeah. so that when someone's looking at it like Elaine has, you can say, you know, yeah. why this looks like a zero. It's not that we're eliminating that position. No. It's that it's the it's an accounting function. We could possibly do without for the, the type of program. What, what the purpose of the program is we couldn't do without. Yeah. So we have to have that. <laughs> Okay, so things that are just, sorry, this is housekeeping, but things that are supported by specific grants are, I, I'm used to seeing all the expenses and then the revenues. And so for something to be zeroed out, but it really is there because it's supported by money that's coming from outside is just a little confusing. Yeah, it, it, it is, it's a, yeah. it's a really tough balance for us to wor to walk through too. You're absolutely right. No, it's a good, good perspective, Elaine. Anything else? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Technology. And I think actually, I think this is really going to be a joint presentation. I think um, our <coughs> assistant superintendent yeah, is going to cheese. take the lead mm. with G. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present technology budget. Uh, the first one is a uh, is a personal request. We currently have a half time position in high school. Um, in the half past year, um, past half year, the feedback we get from you administrator and also teacher is very positive. So there is a strong desire to turn that into a full time position. Um, and that we believe that will benefit not only high school but also district as well. So that's the first one. So next, uh, um, 
for the regular budget, the first one is the contractive services. Those are the uh, service we use for uh, from outside vendors uh, like Comcast for the internet connections, for both uh, for the district and also between buildings. The firewall protections that protect all the internal stuff like equipment and also service. The endpoint, the antivirus protection for the desktop, laptop. Those uh, help teachers like for teachers when they go outside, like home or travel outside, also get protected on their laptops. And also cover the IT consulting services. Those are like when we bring the vendors, sometimes you know we pay for their service, also the travel, all those kind of things. And also the hot, uh, summer help. For computer supplies, that is a standard. Um, it's kind of a supply. Supply requires for all uh, from all schools. We allocate nine dollar per student. Uh, those are used for printers, the tuners, cartridge, the projector box, the microphone speakers, uh, the cameras, power adapter for the for the Chromebooks, and up batteries, of course. The professional development. Those are those are the kind of the training uh, for the IT team, like for part school training. Uh, if any new software, hardware, or network related stuff come up, you know, we can send people out. Uh, that that item not, normally don't get used, and in the end of the year, normally get absorbed back by the district, you know, so it's just there, just in case. The computer hardware, that is a big lot, uh, mostly covers uh, the one to one Chromebooks, the regular upgrade for laptop, desktop, uh, and also the interactive board, and also monitor <coughs> projector. Um, also, a big piece is the network equipment, that's wi uh, Wi-Fi access point, the switches, that kind of stuff. The last one is the uh, software and licensing. Uh, there are used to be four items in there. The instructional technology, that piece moved to teacher learning department this year. So we, we currently have like a school operation, that including all the software used by uh, a teacher and student, like Microsoft Office, and also teacher evaluation, like the baseline edge. Uh, power school student information system, student online registration, <coughs> the library system, the student the, the staff for health applications, and also the website hosting. For business operation, uh, the software we use for covers finance, accounting, and also HR is BodySense, and also for the sub teacher scheduling, the ASAP. Uh, the last one is a technology operation. Those are the software we use to monitor the soft, uh, the network e equipment the bandwidth management, and also the backup, the internal backup, and also cloud-based backup, and also the, um, the ticketing system. We also have a Cisco cloud lock to protect our uh, Google domain for the both application, also data. So that's a quick run for pretty much everything. So we only get $30,000 from E-Rate? Uh, yes. So actually, for that, um, I, I like to explain how that works. There's a three piece involved for the E-Rate part, First, uh, the E-rate cover very specific things. It only cover for network equipment, like the switch and also access point. Majority of the hardware we need, like the laptop, desktop, project, smart, those are not covered. Uh -huh. So that's number one. So number two is um, it allocates for based for student. Like uh, for example, the money is likely very specific for each building. For example, high school has most student, and also high school has most need. Yeah. For, for that, and that, uh, the E-rate money allocated for high school is almost used 100 percent. For other buildings, we usually have you know important stuff. But the thing is, you know, they don't like high school. They only have certain network needs. So you can see like less need, even they have more money allocated for the for the need is now there. Mm -hmm. The third piece is the money is limited per year, so we can only use certain amount for the network. But majority of the need is for non irritable stuff. That's why you know the sweet sweet piece together. That's why you can see some difference there. Yes. Mm -hmm. So sticking with the e rate, we're paying eighteen thousand dollars for a consultant or of some sort, and I'm wondering, isn't that something that we could pick up? Because that's just filling out paperwork and time timing, right? Okay. Um, I'm not sure if that's really a cheap question or to answer, or Pat, uh, if you want to chime I, in on that. I think it's a little bit more than just filling out a form. Yeah, I think it, it is too. Um, they need copies of all kinds of bills. Which you provide. Hmm? Which you provide, right? Which we provide. And 
um, to tell you the truth, to, to take a chance and miss out on a funding opportunity, that's we viewed it at, in the past as something that why we've continued with the consultant. Can we? Can we? Um because I see where this is going. Can we get you to speak with that person? I mean, is this just kind of an evergreen thing? We've got somebody that we give them whatever, but we need to understand what it is that they do for us. Sure. Could you come report back to us Absolutely. and fill us in on what is it that they do? What's the value of what they do? If they weren't here, what would we be, where would we be exposed? That would be, I think that might get to, because um, your question's valid and I don't want to put Pat on the no, spot without having the opportunity to provide the information. Because again, evergreen to me, like evergreen should still be well questioned. I, I think, it, and if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, Cindy, back a few years ago we didn't have a consultant. Yeah. Or we had a consultant that made a mistake. And we had to go yeah. back after them. Right. right. Legally. Uh, yep. So, so I think that this is a good thing for us to do. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, Pat. I appreciate that. Good question. Um, <coughs> anything? I have a lot. <laughs> okay. But I. Um, oh. <laughs> I'll let you say something, but not that. <laughs> no, I just have. I have a question about that internet line. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I don't understand. It, it jumped more. It's more than double the internet and the wireless, oh. wireless access network. Like, what's going? Actually, which line that? That's, uh, that's Comcast a Internet to GPU. <coughs> that's yeah. the move to two. Uh, right. Actually, for that, there's a two part uh, also involved in that. First, uh, so what you see is what I budgeted, but in the end, what we actually pay will be different. First, uh, we got get like 40 or 50 percent rebate from the E rate for that. Second, uh, when we budget, we budget a little bit extra just in case we need. Right now, we only pay for one gig internet connection, but we budget for two gig. So by the end of the year, we won't, that number will drop. If you don't need two gig, we only pay for one gig. So that's why like the number you see from last year is actually what we pay, and also after you read. But the one we put in is we have to buy the full amount at the beginning. So here again, though, here you're gonna hear the same old broken record out of me. Here again, not this is not criticism on you. You've got to understand that it's not. It's we're anticipating. We know it's not going to be this. My concern is if we were to adopt the budget as is right now, we'd roll into 20 FY 2021 with an exorbitant number in this line item and others that if it does work out uh, over the course of the year, the actual is much less than the planned. Are we rolling the planned into the next year's budget? Are we rolling in the actual? And it's on the school committee to challenge the administration on that because, and, and I'm not saying that you would do anything untoward. That's not my point. No, I think so. Um, yeah, no, it really isn't. Because if we're, if we're every year we get into this, things are getting tougher and tougher and more challenging for us. And with technology, we're adding Chromebooks. Ergo, we're going to need additional technology support. Um, but I worry that with things getting so tight that if we're struggling to give the schools what they need, in lieu of making sure all this other stuff is there, you just got to stay on top of where these dollars are going. Steve. Yep. My comment is when, when we get the monthly statements, we, we see what we've actually spent Versus to that the point plan. plus what the commitment is to the rest of the budget. Right. Here we're seeing, we're not seeing any actual expenses for we're looking at what we budgeted for fiscal year 19 as opposed to what we're now trying to budget for fiscal year 20. The actuals. We don't see any actuals here. So let's think about this for a second. And again, I don't want to go down a dog leg, but you raise a good point in order for us to be most effective in the planning for this year's budget is should we be, I mean, we're not going to ask you guys to go back and take this entire <coughs> book just and, can't even imagine. and give us actual. However, Steve's point is well taken. We're making decisions based on asks, not actuals. And I think that's, that's a valid point. So we got to figure out what we're going to end up doing here. And if, you know, if 
let's talk about the big ticket items and maybe we chomp at those. So maybe it's technology, maybe, you know, as we get into some of these other areas, we ask for, here's what your, here's what we voted on last year, here's what your actual is, and then here's what your requested is. When we're talking about, ex, ex, you know, large extraordinary need, and you have large extraordinary need this year for the right reasons, right? Um, really happy to see that the high school may finally get the support that they need right yeah. so thank you for doing that I understand why you need additional internet and, and wide area network support um, I understand why the hardware I want to talk about why the hardware purchases went up but we added another grade level to it so of course it's gonna go up am I getting close uh Yes, but there are a couple of things I would like to make the committee aware after you're done. No, you can jump in now, interrupt me, I'm good with okay. that. So for you in particular, uh, there are two things I'd like everybody here to, to make aware. Uh, first is, you is never 100% guarantee, yeah. especially with what's going on with the current administration, uh, I mean the, the government. Yeah. So if we do not get e rate, so we, we probably we, we could be in a very tough situation. And uh, second, for the for the budget, like, you know, we currently pay for one gig connection, but we budget for two. Like, every month during the leadership meeting, I show all the principals, uh, centralizing stuff, like, the actual usage, we're actually very close to the one gig, to the limit we are, we are now. So, with all this Chromebook deployment, if schools start actually using more, right. we could see a sudden jump on a monthly basis. So, if we do not have that budget, we could be in a very awkward situation. Yeah. Especially with all the, like, the MCAS, you know, all green, all, all. That's so exactly but right. For the first yeah. time, I think we can say, we can say, you've known it all along, mm -hmm. that your area could have deep impacts on learning. Yes. <laughs> and I don't know that we would have been at this place <laughs> in the past, but we have now hit the wall where you do need additional. And I, and I think we can all grasp that. So I'm not worried about that, and your explanation is very helpful. Thank you for that. Um, one of the questions I have is, and we're going to go back to you, um, is on the school operation budget. You went from 99, we went from a voted 99,000. Again, we don't know what the actual spend was, and we need to see that. Pat, we need to see this updated with the actuals. Can you guys do that? This year, we have four. Do you have the, are these line items in the budget? Yeah, all of them are in the budget. So what would it be a big effort for you to add for technology, not the whole budget? For oh, tech just for technology? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought you meant for the whole budget. No, though. and I think we're, you know, we'll, be, okay. uh, we'll be really critical about what we ask this of okay. from you, but I sure. think this area um, because I recognize, I think we all recognize the significant need and, and the detrimental impact that it will have on the learning and the operations of teaching in the district. I think sure. we need that, so it was a terrific suggestion. Thank you for that. Um, but, Suchi, on the school operation line item, um, the ask, again, Steve, you know what? Thanks for putting that on our heads. The ask was 99000 We don't know if that, where that landed. Do, we, do you guys have that at your fingertips? Um, but if you don't, that's okay. Let me know. Interrupt me if you do. And this year, it's it's an additional three thousand, so it's jumped by 30 percent, thirty three percent. Is that what? Can you just you don't have to explain what each of these um, programs is or licenses is, but could you just collectively tell us what happened there? Are you uh, focused on the hardware? Line? The school, school operation. Ops. School operation. School operations on page three. Last page. It's. Yes, yeah, the last page, Chief. Believe it or not, the hardware is the easiest to understand. Yeah, we get that. Yeah. We, since we're adding a grade. Do you see where it went from voted of 99? To the 133. With Microsoft Soft School License Agreement, IO Education, Power School, PS, EMS. Oh, okay. Chief, it's kind of the, la the last bullets on our prepared okay. notes for yep. today. And, I, and the only reason I ask is because I know you know what these are. You don't have to tell me what each one is. I just want to collectively understand. Um, the school operations, so, oh, oh, actually, a big item changing from the, the website hosting that over like uh, 12,000. That one used to be on the, in the contracted services. That one moved to here. 
Oh, that is big. So I was not it. That's yeah. a housekeeping move. And yeah. also on top of that, uh, we have this uh, additional almost six thousand for the website compliance monitor. I'm not sure if you guys heard the news, like you know, a uh, famous thing. Beyonce, I think her name is. Some, some. Oh, Beyonce. Uh, Beyonce. Somebody <laughs> like sued her website because uh, I think the people is is blind. She can't see her website because her website is not compliant. 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 With all this, uh, compliant. Yeah. 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 So this is service is to protect us for all the visual impact in those folks. So those are the big items. Those two items are almost twenty grand. All right. So, so you said the contracted services. <laughs> oh, so is that? The li light speed filter? Is that what moved? What, I, I, you said something. No, the website hosting plus the school messenger. Where is that? It's here. Uh, it is. The the but there was yeah. zero about voted last year, so I'm not sure. No, 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 it's right. No. See, website Are you still hosting? Hosting? school operation? Because it's right there. In no, I think what I heard she say was that the reason that number went up in part is because the contracted services yeah, no. went down. But I'm trying to see where did the contracted yeah, services go down. Because I see that it went up for internet and, and wide area network. Yes, but that part, like I said, that is, that is before the E-rate. You have to take away like almost 40 or 50 percent. Depending on if we get the E-rate. E if the E-rate is available to us. All right, so there's like yeah. a lot of squish in these yeah. numbers, yeah, like a wicked so. amount of squish. Right. So, and that is not a technical term. But <laughs> I think I would like to ask that, and we quickly get, not for Wednesday, because Wednesday's jam-packed, but yeah. on the next meeting, and we may have to move some regular business off during budget season, and if that's the case, mm -hmm. so be it. But please bring forward the district um, technology FY voted, FY actual, FY 20, so we can have a, a really juicy conversation and we, we need to dedicate 20 minutes to that. Does that sound like it will work for you guys? Okay. You know, you, you, no. are, you are like not a happy woman. What's going no, on? No, it, that's really great, but it, again, I'm back to, I mean, these are really large numbers and we're going to keep adding to it and we still haven't talked about how we're going to sustain it. Well, I think we are sustaining it. This is what's happening. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to challenge you, Lynn. That's not it. But I mean, we've known each other a long time. <laughs> um, if and, and then I'm going to turn it over to you. You tell me if I'm right or wrong, because I'm not defending or um, being critical. I'm just, this to me is where it feels like we've been for a long time. Yeah. If the district has made a commitment to move to a one, one-to-one -one initiative, and we've pushed that down into the lower grades now. So we have, what, six grades that are now covered by yes. grades <laughs> 6 through 12. We know that the hardware is so going to increase. So we know that the support is going to increase. We know that the width, the bandwidth that we need in order to support those implements mm -hmm. is going to increase. There is, that is the plan. And I think Todd brought forward <coughs> at the beginning of the school year um, what, how this was going to kind of roll out so it could be evergreen so that we could, we didn't have to have those big huge spikes and then nothing and then a big huge spike. So Th this is, this is going to grow and we have no options as we move forward because we're tied into Comcast. We can't go anywhere and this is the number that's going to keep going crazy. All right. So is there another? Is there an option to look at another? Is that the carrier you're concerned about? Well, it isn't even just. There's just other things. We just we're we're tying our hands here because we're not giving ourselves options as we move forward. We can negotiate, and then even with these keep adding one to one. I mean, I just I can only tell you about personally my daughter and her friends. I mean, there's in six of them, three of them have had three computers like just because they either drop or they go. And I'm like, this is, there's no accountability for anybody getting a one-to-one. -one. There's just a lot of pieces that we're putting onto the school, and I'm not exactly sure that it's totally the school's responsibility. Hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Actually, uh, there are a couple of things I, I can explain. So regarding the accountability, uh, starting this year, we actually take a very serious look at that. If you notice the damage or the whatever to the machine is uh, malicious damage, we actually send a bill to the parents. And we have very, very straightforward like a process. We're working with the local school, my department, and also with the uh, accounting department. Once we identify this is a malicious damage, the parents will pay. So we have that in place. So that's number one. Second, uh, regarding the, the internet connections, uh, we do have options. But unfortunately, right now, we, we don't, because the Sweet Comcast um, 
it's not even a, actually not compact. Verizon is not available in this town because we have a district. We can't bring that service to all towns, so we couldn't use it. So every year, like when we not every year, like during during all the contract uh, period, we we went out looking for different options. The only one actually worked well for us is Comcast. Not only because of their service, the performance, also reliability, but also because of the cost. We do have like other vendors coming here present their option solutions. The cost is just way too much compared to Comcast. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing is um, another option we actually we seriously look at is build our own fiber, private fiber. Mm -hmm. The reason we did not do that purely is because of uncertainty of high school. Because if we do a private fiber, we need a central place. So naturally, high school will be the hub for that, you know, for the at the center and reach out to other schools. But with uncertainty of if we're getting a new high school there or not, we can't risk to put this large amount of initial invest in there. Then after that, you know, two years later we have new building, we have to lock down everything. It's gonna be like disaster cost wise to the district. So that's one reason we didn't go that direction. But that is option. So we're, we're locked into t Comcast and there are no options? I'm not questioning you again, I'm, I'm asking the question. Yep. There's no other option? Because I know this is a problem even um, in Bolton for residents mm -hmm. that are unhappy with Comcast. That's totally the service, um, the cost. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no, do you, is there, how, how can we find? For right now, I hate to say this, from purely from cost point of view, we kind of the only choice, the best choice is Comcast. Like I said, we do like have other options. We bring up other vendors coming here, but the proposal they give us is way <coughs> more expensive than the Comcast. Is it more expensive initially and then it tapers off or is it consistent? Same thing. Like there are two parts. One is the initial cost, one is after right. the, the monthly cost. We paid a lot of money about five years ago to put in our own fiber. So you're saying that's not ours? That's not our own fiber. That's, I think, I, I don't know, that, that is not our own fiber. So we paid a lot of money not to own it? It's an initial... I, I don't understand. Well, wait, let him answer. It's a Comcast, you know, it's, it's so-called the last mile connection. Basically, um, Comcast are all these big players even even Verizon, they have they have fiber connections mm -hmm. on the pole already. Yep. But for them to connect from the pole to the actual buildings, the so called mass mile connections, those are be, those belong to Comcast still. Okay, just so, from sitting here though, I know that we paid a lot of money to run fiber between all of the schools. That's Comcast connection, yes. But we paid for it. It's our wire. It's our fiber. It is not according to the agreement. It is so not. we paid for it, installed it, but we have no. Well, did we? Uh, all right. So I want to. I want to follow this thread for a second. Chief, hold on one second. Yep. Were we told we had to pay for it? We had and did the money actually go there? Why Are we in another one of those bizarro no. throwback moments? It's a retro moment. This is one of those things that we we asked for it because I think we owe, we owned it for the contract because it was supposed to connect all the building, all the schools. But because we're in different districts, we had to pay for it. Different so towns. We, yes, yeah, so we bought the wire and we bought the fiber. We did paid we the installation. We did not. We paid for the installation. Yes, let me let me explain this way. Just like because that was over three hundred thousand. Just like your private home, mm -hmm. you have Comcast service. Comcast will run a lot to our home, then provide your service. You pay service after that. But that service, that last still Comcast, is not anybody's. It's still Comcast property. Same as us. The difference is when Comcast run private run connecting private home, the private home do not pay Comcast. But for us, we pay for that connection. That's the only difference. But we do not own that. All right, why don't we do this? I think we're gonna have more conversation on it and I think this needs to go to another school committee meeting. I'm gonna ask you folks, Chi, first I want you to understand that your presentation was excellent this year. Thank you so much. <coughs> appreciate the level of detail. It was the right Thank amount you. of detail. I appreciate the fact that you had the answers that you did. So you should feel really good about that. Our questions are not, our, our questions are because we truly need to understand this because you are going to become a bigger and bigger part of what this district does and delivers. 
we're your partner in this. We're yeah. not being critical of you. It's we really need to understand it. And there were many things that were said in previous years that now we're kind of like, wait a minute, we were told this, but it's something else. It's not you. I'm just done. Okay. <laughs> Thank Sounds you. Good. Okay. And and one second. And so what I'd really like for us to do is to let's put a juicy blunk of blunk. Let's put a blue bluesy <laughs> junk of time. <laughs> <laughs> it's Saturday morning. For God's sakes, I've had one cup of coffee. All right. Um, a big junk of time on the agenda. Um, Pat, I think you know. I think that the, the re retool of how we're presenting this. I and I and I, I hate to say this, but. I'm holding myself back from saying, please do the whole budget like that, because I know you'll probably have a coronary, and I don't want you to do that. We love you. Um, but for this area, it's absolutely critical, and then we'll see as we roll. Um, so we're going to ask you to come back. School committee members, in this area, and you, you're going to have questions too. Please coordinate those questions. I want them to be very succinct and very specific. Send them to me. I'll get back to you if there's something that doesn't make sense, and then we'll hand that over to the superintendent to make sure that the time that we're going to set aside for this follow-up discussion is really um, specific and we're able to get to the things we need to um, and stay on track. What do you want the questions about? Um, you have another week, because we're not going to be able to get it in for Wednesday's meeting. 13th. It would be February 13th. Yeah. So even before that, I would like them by next Wednesday, uh, or no, by the Wednesday previous. So that would be the sixth. If you could get them to me by February sixth, that gives you time to mm -hmm. take this back, think about it. All right. Now, uh, so what? So are we good? Don't leave. I'm good. All right. You're good. <laughs> Steve, you wanted to make a comment. The only comment I wanted to make is that we're we're, we're dealing with two separate things here. Okay. One is, one is the technology and how we we roll technology into the, into the system. But the other is definitely a budget question. And these were questions, kind of things of, that I was going off the wall with last year, the way we the way we present some of the numbers. I don't I don't really care what we I mean what we voted for for fiscal year nineteen is fine. But I got it's, it's really important to know what we've what we've actually spent. we we're over six months into the into the time now what we've spent and what we've committed like she gives us the numbers on a monthly basis on some of these okay. broken down into these so you your point whatever. was well taken and we are moving that absolutely into so i appreciate what you're saying i think we hit that one and i appreciate you bringing it up okay are we any other questions for chief are we good what time is it we um, we're supposed seven to seven minutes behind. You have a two minute break. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be Keep back in here at ten twenty. Keep folks. in mind that the cameras are continuing. Four. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna get started. We have, we're late. What? I don't know who you were talking to. Oh, Sean O'Shea. No. Um. Uh, Susan. 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 <laughs> Up at the high school. Yes. Bigelow. Hi, um, teaching and learning Cindy Larson, coordinator of digital learning in Martina Kenyon. <laughs> I'm coordinator extraordinaire of curriculum K through 12. Please do share with us your teaching and learning. All right. Um, so we just wanted to start off by saying thanks again for the opportunity to present um, this budget this year, and we love coming to give the principal presentations um, as a reminder of sort of the um, the consistency and cohesiveness that we've worked to develop over the last few years um, and we appreciate being part of that team um, and being able to support uh, a lot of the school-based initiatives on the district level so the budget we are presenting today kind of represents that collaboration um, another layer of that collaboration um, so our budget represents a district-wide effort to support educators um, in supporting student learning that really empowers uh, students to use and apply um, knowledge that they're gaining in meaningful ways and to utilize technology to build and demonstrate their own understanding. And we've talked about that over the last um, couple of years. As an example, um, as a result of the support from this year's budget, our grade eight science students um, recently completed a project where they um, researched a science cause of interest and then developed a public service announcement um, that they used to teach their classmates about this cause that they were passionate about. 
and it presented some great um, interdisciplinary opportunities with um, social science, ELA, and math, actually, in terms of the different um, things that kids had to do. And that was a direct result of the collaboration that um, we facilitated with teachers to develop that common um, project and unit surrounding it. Um, you already heard from the, my uh, principal colleagues, K-12, to that also as a result of the um, budgetary support this year, uh, students in uh, their literacy work, K-12, uh, are really working to, um, to get specific instruction and specific feedback to strengthen their reading skills while also having a lot of choice in terms of the reading and writing that they're doing. And we see this simultaneously building those really important skills and hopefully um, developing their passion for reading and writing, and it was great to hear that mentioned earlier too. So the FY20 budget really continues this focus, but adds another layer as we've recently, um, uh, as the state has recently approved an updated history social science framework. So a lot of the um, change in this year's budget reflects that um, state um, initiative as well. Uh, just like <coughs> other content areas in history and social science, students are gonna learn content, but really do that by developing skills that will take them through life, such as media literacy, civil discourse, civic engagement, and we hope that curriculum and professional development support will really help teachers facilitate that with students so that we can... Um, the civics is a student and staff initiative. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, and again, it's it, there's so much opportunity for interdisciplinary work, as that small example earlier hopefully showed. So, oh, um, and Needle, please let people know about that <coughs> because that will put pressure on us not to cut it. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Say it. No. Independent media. <laughs> Pressuring me. Independent media. Oh yeah, she's independent. She's, I still don't know what she's going to say. God only knows what she's going to say. But Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. That was so, rude. So the budget um, this year supports history, social science, curriculum development work, and alongside that, um, some district-wide professional development to support that curriculum work and instruction with students. And this actually um, aligns with a curriculum review cycle that we've developed in the last couple years. <laughs> Um, where we set out a vision th um, that curriculum development includes unit development, uh, aligned year-long scope and sequence development, but also is directly supported by specific content-related professional development that teachers use with students, but also in developing these collaborative units. So we're working towards a co co that cohesive plan where we support um, instruction, not only through collaboration, but actually building the capacity and skill set of our teachers. Um, who are already great and we just want to help grow even more. So, uh, for example, uh, the History Social Science Initiative that we'll um, work toward next year, our PD side of that will be provided in partnership with Primary Source, which is a great organization who will develop a course for us to support the sixth and seventh um, history and social science teachers who have um, once again gotten a new set of standards for their <laughs> Uh, for their two courses and actually an interesting model where it's a, a, a two year long course um, to support student skill development and that organization also provides a menu of existing courses that all of our teachers district wide will be able to choose from for PD, for PD professional development. Um, we'll also bring a consultant in to work with uh, teachers in grades 6 to 12 in multiple content areas, um, supporting <coughs> skills around media literacy and research, um, which we see growing in terms of the need for students to develop, but also to develop teachers' capacity to actually teach and build those skills. That's um, kind of new for us. And supporting this um, form of professional development systemically is kind of new for us. Um, in terms of wanting to sustain that, and that's the reason that you see, um, if you look in the budget detail, an updated line called content-based PD, content-based professional development. That's where we're housing that specific curriculum develop focus, development focused PD. Um, we're also working with teachers this year to create a plan for shifting secondary ELA instruction um, and shared curriculum development to build upon the ongoing literacy effort in K-5. to You heard the, my principal colleagues talk a little bit about that. Um, you saw a presentation from Luther Burbank students that kind of represented some of that work as well. And this year, uh, actually last year, we started um, a planning phase where uh, we're collaborating with um, ELA teachers to develop a, a plan for um, how we will bridge the instruction and student learning K-5 
which um, uh, uses the reading workshop and writing workshop model with the high school who's now incorporating a lot more choice reading and um, workshop based writing into their instruction so we're looking at how do we bridge that particularly at that um, middle school level and again that um, will is the next step in developing our K-12 literacy plan where um, we expect the outcome to be a cohesive vision for um, helping students develop those really critical reading and writing skills um, that will take them through their academic life but also through their life outside of school um, and that uh, PD is also found in that same content focused PD line and Sydney's going to talk a little bit about our new uh, line called instructional software we, which we took over from the um, technology budget and is now in teaching and learning. So that's interesting before you do that. So the increases that we saw through T don't include this that typically would have been in those in that? Right. So we're going to want a <coughs> holistic view of all of the tech spend as well, I think. Respect that, it, and it makes sense that it's where it belongs, but I think we need a unified understanding of the total spend. Because <coughs> this number is big. I'm not saying it's too big. We just need to understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead, Cindy. Okay. So strengthening our uses of technology, um, instructional technology continues to be a focus in all of our grades with emphasis on um, the 6 to 12 support for the 1 to 1 program. And in order to support our district goal of empowering students through innovative uses of technology, we're adding to the software line item this year um, a system that will organize, analyze, and streamline our classroom technologies in the one-to-one -one environment. So the name of the system is Learn Platform, and it will provide information on which tools are being used to their fullest capabilities, um, how often they're being used, in addition, it will um, help teachers select appropriate digital tools and help all of us make dis um, budgeting decisions in the future purchases and inform us on professional development. It's um, an online system that is um, works in real time. So we can see what teachers are using, how often they're using it, and how they're using it. So that would be new to this line item this year. That's it. We tried to keep it succinct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I know they're going to have questions. I want to jump into a couple things. So again, the technology com uh, comprehensive view. Uh, there's a lot of asks here. I think back of the napkin net is 120,000 increase over last year's voted again, which doesn't give us a perspective to understand what we actually spent. Uh, and uh, you know where I'm going, right? I have. I'm sorry, but. Um, but anyway, we can talk about it offline. Uh, I think we're going to have to do that for the majority, of, well, for the budget. But we can talk about it. I don't want to commit you right now. Um, civics. This is an initiative from the state. Yes, and it's also a, there was a bill passed that um, also uh, requires that students take on civics projects in a couple grade levels. How are we responding? to the state's requirement. And by that I mean, are we going over and above because I would love to hear you say yes. <laughs> we always try to, but we are, um, we're trying to be strategic in, in planning this, but one of our um, th three year visions is to build a um, civics plan, K to 12, to, to work with teachers to um, incorporate civic engagement work throughout the curriculum instead of having it focused in only a few grade levels. So that is one of the ways that we're trying to go. So even through some of the after school programs and blah blah blah. I will definitely take that uh, suggestion. But yeah. we're just starting this uh, this work now. Yeah I think you know one of the best byproducts that came out of the ugly at the national level I don't care what anybody's political leanings are that's not my point is people are more aware and we need more of that. And that's part of turning out kids who are Absolutely. ready to hit the ground running and make a difference, right? Absolutely. And, and we're so um, fortunate and excited that we actually have a, a leg up on a lot of districts already through this new curriculum because um, we've been teaching civics in grade 8 
uh, where that's actually now the new standards expect that, whereas they didn't um, as actively in the past. And so it's been a great starting point for us because the team's been able to build off of some really strong work in there already and just say, okay, how can we now take this to another level where we're really trying to develop students' skills as civic, um, civically engaged students and also um, um, with some of that media literacy that I talked about. So, so Martina, if the STEM scopes programs were involved, uh, the asks were included in the school-based mm -hmm. budgets, but you've got components of it in here, or do you not? I don't, I don't have any. Oh, so the science, science. Of, oh, it says zero. Never mind. I was wrong. <laughs> so we try to keep you um, like seeing one year of history in terms of what we've asked, but yeah. especially with district textbook adoption, um, you're going to see a lot of zeros in one area or another as we yep. shift our initiative and uh, yep. focus. All right. Who? Um, yeah, and I think it is going to be helpful to see what we did last year. Who else has questions for Martina, Lynn? Um, because this is a state mandate, are there any grants? I did apply for a grant recently, actually, okay. to support um, this work. I haven't heard yet that we were accepted, but uh, the one that came out, out. <laughs> we <Okay>. did. <laughs> we went after it, so we'll keep uh, our fingers crossed. So, so, do you very have, so do you have a timeline on, I mean, I love that you're going to make a plan. Is, is there a timeline for it? Uh, for what part of it? For the civics. Oh, uh, so the timeline is really that we're, we've just put out a posting for a um, history social science committee. Um, who will be charged with developing this plan, but it, it is about... Um, it's really the infancy stage. stage. Yeah. yeah. No, it's just starting. Yeah. Yeah, so what... So I'm looking at three years. Three years for it to be completed, but you're not... You're starting it for next year. For um, starting even to just plan how we're going to roll out all the different components of our um, history social science framework, which includes civics, so that in three years we'll be fully... Civics is not standalone in, in this particular yeah. discussion. So it's totally history. It's all it's, it's all, all corporate it's a whole thing. So it's a whole big all, thing that we need to deal with. Okay, already. and so these asks are actually to start some of that work, right? Yes. Yes. So we're gonna flush it out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I got one on a different. Oh, subject. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So instructional software. Some of these sound familiar, like BrainPop and Rubicon Atlas, and like there was no money for it last year, and there is this year. And so I'm wondering. Um, well, why? No. They, yeah. Why? No, I th I think that's just you have because. You to look back to the other one. Yeah. Because if you take a look, I, now Pat, maybe just clarify this because because these say zeros here, I, I think that that's probably what's confusing yeah. to Lynn or to anybody looking at this. Quite frankly, it doesn't mean that none of the that all of this is all brand new. Right, it's been moved. It's just that it's, it's in the budget. budget. So, and so I think, I think again we right. need to indicate yeah. that in the description yeah. section because yeah. people looking at it be like, "Wow, you this is it. all brand new," yeah. and it's not. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? You know what, Pat? Good it question, may Lynn. be even easier, like in the instructional software new account Six. one, okay. is in that gray it's bar a just to put a description so it doesn't screw up all your lines. But whatever you want to do. Right. It, it does say the move from technology budget. Up. Oh, you're right. It does. Okay, so the, my question is um, only because I don't like assessments. So I'm looking at these, and I'm, I'm just wondering: Did we, um, we we reviewed these, and, and we know that these are actually working and helpful? Yes, I mean, so uh, we've we've really really been strategic in terms of which assessment tools that we uh, invest in. So the tool, the two that are listed there, uh, Edulastic is an awesome tool. I know a lot of the many principals are still here. Uh, it's, it um, prepares students for that next generation assessment. We use it K-12 to and the data side because it's auto-scored. Teachers are spending their time looking at the data and trying to plan instruction as a result mm -hmm. um, and giving students feedback instead of um, just the typical, you know, like, scoring side mm -hmm. it's awesome it's an awesome tool then you'll recall that we started to take a look at this when i first came into the district we said we wanted to look at all of yeah. these assessments and we've done that mm -hmm. i don't think we've ever reported it out but we've done that so just from the back thing i'm just going to throw this out because i want to come full circle so we were collecting a lot of information but not doing anything with it mm -hmm. so we we changed that model we are really working we hard to change very it. Hard to there are some things it. limiting us in terms of yeah. being efficient with that, but it's uh, it's on our radar, and we it's a also a passion project for both Cindy and I to um, mm -hmm. try to streamline our Good. data yeah. um, 
aggregation and be able to act upon it because Good. we don't want to assess students unnecessary. That's so it's refreshing to hear that um, when we ask questions about programs, it's like, well, we really don't use it, but we're gonna. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, no, I don't think we have any of that at play. No, love it. Okay. All right, we're going to move, unless it's really quick, because I want to get Cindy to kind of do what she can do. Yeah, just real quick, and just so my daughter's in Mr. K's class, and she's been going through the bills. She's <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's totally, totally, my kids didn't do it, so they're, they're into it. Oh, he is anyway, so. <laughs> Well, that's because he's a good teacher. Absolutely. Don't leave. Okay, Cindy, what do you got? Thank you. So she already did her. Oh, yeah. So the new item in that instructional software was the more yeah. yeah. that I talked about. All the other systems are ones that we use. So your biggest asks are <laughs> so the instructional technology would be the learn platform software because um, right now the analyzation of uh, how we use and what we use and how often we use it is like manual reports that I do. Mm -hmm. It also will provide us um, the ability to choose software because it's aggregated information from all over the United States. I'm not sure if it goes outside the country, uh, but they can learn from other teachers. It brings everybody together who's using similar software. Teachers rate it. They can communicate with each other. There's tutorials. So that's something that I've been doing manually. Um, and this will help really aggregate and bring more information and, and really let us uh, support the one-to-one. -one. And it's being brought down to the, the teacher level, so the teacher can actually That's correct. Oh, yeah. <coughs> it, it, it will provide them, when they're using it, PD, just learning more about how to select mm -hmm. appropriate software. Informally. Right, because there's a lot of free software out there, so. Okay. okay. Yeah, so the, the Learn platform, it, um, the way you're describing it sounds like kind of another level layer of technology. Yes. So you've got the programs and then this is going to analyze the programs. Yes. Is the goal of this, because it's not inexpensive, mm -hmm. um, to sort of pay for itself by eliminating programs that aren't being used or aren't as well, or are we just learning to optimize what we already have? No, it's it's going to help us for future decisions, absolutely. But will and you be able to eliminate? Save, right, and streamline and save. So yes. if we're not using tools to its fullest capabilities, um, we don't want to continue to purchase those tools. Right. We need to analyze and look at other ones. This. Um, it's hard for me to describe because <laughs> we haven't used it yet. Um, I've only seen demos of it. I know that Todd has used it in Danvers and highly recommends it. Um, knowing all the hours that I put into doing that manually, um, I'm, I would really look forward to something that would even bring more to the district than just you know one person mm -hmm. going through everything. Um, I was going to say, but I think it will also um, supplement professional development around technology integration. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you, ladies. Thank We're going to move yeah. quickly Is here. In, what's that? Is Mark Jean's a separate ask? No, I think. Oh, it's in. Did you have a separate ask? Did you have a priority? What was oh, your priority? priorities are um, the ones that spoke of history, social science support, and then the literacy initiative to fill up K-12. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're moving. We're moving to nursing. Lisa. Well, again, as everyone else has said, I want to thank you for um, allowing me to follow through with um, the budget and requests um, for your consideration for health services. Um, I do want to bring to the attention that since uh, 2001, the health services across the district was supported by district budget as well as the Central School Health um, Service Grant, which was funded by DPH. Uh, this grant is in its final year this year, um, but the cycle and those funds will no longer be available. And how much is that? Um, how much is that, Lisa? Around seven, uh, 77. Uh, Would that cover 100 is that? That's uh, Would that cover? <coughs> Um, 77900 It covered, um, some, well, part of some of my requests here is um, a salary request of one FTE, um, which the Essential School Health Grant, it's not a new position, it's one that was funded by the Essential School Health Grant, um, and asking for the district to absorb that so we can continue um, to maintain a full-time nurse at each school um, across the district as well as um, two at the high school. 
Um, that request um, to absorb the increase will allow the health services to continue to support um, student health and wellness by decreasing absenteeism and increasing our return to class rate. Um, research has shown that if we don't have a full-time nurse or part-times um, that we tend to send them home quicker when somebody's not there as opposed to keeping them in school. So we're really trying to keep down that chronic absenteeism because they continue to do assessments and surveillances on illnesses. Where do we not have a nurse, Lisa? We do, but if, if we don't, the, um, we have 1.0 FTEs that the grant was supporting. Um, the, the, we have 9.5 FTEs in, in nursing, but one of those FTEs was supported by the um, Essential School Health Grant, and the grant is no longer this year. So we, oh, so I thought you said that. Oh, I thought, you, I thought yeah. you said that the FY 2020 was the last year. It's it's 2019. This year. This year. That's the last year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And unfortunately. Um, that would have been presented in last year's budget if it was known. I didn't start until November and it wasn't brought to our attention that they were eliminating, they were not gonna re-apply um, for that that grant, which has happened since 2001. Every five years they um, reinstated it if you apply for it and, and this year they decided to move it and um, have a, a whole new grant in its place. Okay, so one second. So one of the things I think we need when you guys come back with your next something, we need something on a, an executive summary slide or, that indicates grants that we know are going away. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I think it's going to be really important because this is one where I'd be like, oh, come on, really? But, oh, come on, really? <laughs> okay. Um. So that's, again, it's the positions that currently they're not asking for a new position, just the transfer of salaries. <clears throat> as far as non-salary requests, um, again, with the end of the grant, our mission and goal is to continue to foster safe and supporting learning environments, and that's including our safety initiative and plans that we've had in place um, that, again, some of the grant and the district had supported and will continue to support this year, but looking forward into next year, <coughs> we'll see a slight increase um, in 200 increase in each school um, to absorb some of those supplies and nursing equipment, which does look at uh, continuing for SEL curriculum um, in the health education realm, K through two, um, as well as the high school. And then for um, our last line there, um, and, and obviously we also have some increases there, which I'm sure you're going to ask about, but uh, as far as AEDs and yeah. things like that, the AEDs, I knew you were gonna come there, so I'll go there. <coughs> the AED this year, every four years, the batteries um, yeah. expire, and that's that's the increase in the cost. So the, the district will have to absorb, um, all right. Supply yeah, those batteries to AEDs. A, a, not a criticism, but a flat number. It's I, I'm suspicious of. So just try to get a little tighter in your next iteration with what these numbers are actually. It's closer you can get than these big brown fluffy pillowy <coughs> things. Not, not a criticism on you or anyone else. It's just. Do you want those? I have them. No, don't do it oh, now. Okay, Give it that's to them. Fine. Okay. <laughs> I thought that you were asking them. Like, I no, 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 down no, by where no. they are, what location. No, it's just a general comment. Oh, okay. Fluffy numbers scare me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, obviously, our nursing professional development is remaining the same as this current point. Okay. Um, Alice training. Yes. Oh, are you not done yet? No, I am. I'm, I'm ready for questions. Yeah. Alice training. So uh, the, I yeah. hope no one says no to this. So the Alice training, um, we, we um, bought into a three-year contract for the Alice, so it wasn't just a one and done, which we, we yeah. want to continue the process. It's a three-year for us, then would we be considered an Alice community um, trained? So the first year, as you're well aware, we had the two-day training and online training. That cost um, for the three years is um, just shy of $18,000. So the grant last year picked up the first um, just shy of 6,000, This year, um, the grant I've allocated funds aside for it, it's the, the last year, the third year, which is why you see the increase in 6,000 for the Alice. It was the last year of the grant. So maybe in that description, you could put final of three year, whatever, mm -hmm. so that people know that this is, that, that it's ongoing. Yeah, we're, well, it's not that it's ongoing, it's the final of a, a series, right? Correct. Because then you're going to be ready, you're going to be able to do it. And I do it simultaneously with this program. What this program is allowing the district to do is to actually everybody viewing the same online oh. program at, this, at whether it be the same time or not, 
um, as we have new um, employees start throughout the year, they, uh, the principals know to alert me and I will add them so they can take it. So somebody that started tomorrow can actually take it. So okay. it's not just that it's the beginning of the year and you won and, uh, or you lose it. Um, so we have the licensure for 600 a yeah. year to take it. So we leave some, some cushion for new employees, substitutes, et cetera. So safety in the schools I know is something, so is that coming up in your budget or Rob's? Rob has some. Cameras, blah, blah, yes, blah. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. I won't ask that. Any quick questions for Lisa? Thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome. Nice Thank work. You, Lisa. Thank you. All right. We're moving. We're moving. Facility. And here he comes. Who's the black one? And he, who said that? You did. <laughs> you better have a request. <laughs> I just want to start by thanking uh, the school committee and the communities across the district for their continued support in maintaining the buildings. Um, and I and I want to say one thing to you quick. Don't worry about us being over. It's much more important that we have the opportunity to talk to you guys and ask our questions. I apologize to anyone who's uncomfortable with the time limit, but we only got one time to do this a year. All right, so I'm sorry. Go it's ahead. Okay. Um, you know, Continue support for maintaining uh, the complex and our you know, aging buildings that we have across the district um, and providing a safe and healthy learning environment for the staff and the students. Um, one of my requests this year is for a new position in the grounds and building department. Um, the Neshoa Facilities Department is looking to add one full time employee to the building and grounds department. Adding a third team member to the building and grounds department will allow the department to fulfill proper maintenance to grounds, sports fields, and buildings across the district on a daily basis. Having the ability <clears throat> to take the time to benefit for a better finished product instead of rushing from one task to another. Currently, it is a daunting task to get from one side of the district to the other on any given day to perform mowing and grounds maintenance tasks. During the sports seasons, 60 plus percent of the time is dedicated to the high school to ensure that all sports fields are mowed, painted, and prepped for games on a daily basis, along with maintaining outside equipment that pertains to athletic teams, including bleachers and concession building areas. This does not leave a lot of time to uh, tend to the other school properties. Adding another full-time team member will allow the head custodian to utilize his professional skill set, concentrating more on um, conditioning and maintaining both natural and artificial fields, playgrounds and other areas for safe play for students and athletes. Allow for more time to be spent on building repairs and small construction projects. Allow for more time for regular maintenance on grounds and other equipment across the district. Safety pruning of trees and bushes for better visibility for security and overall aesthetics. Having a third team member will allow the department to branch off across the district as support for custodians in the other buildings during snow removal operations. I feel by adding a third team member to the ground and buildings department will further enhance the overall curb appeal so that students, staff, and general public have a safe, clean, and inviting environment entering our campuses across the district. Mm. That will also be to fall under the uh, UNC contract. Is, uh, are, you, are you good? I'm good. All right. Um, I haven't even finished totaling up your your, your, your Do you have a calculator? <laughs> no, I'm doing it manually just so it hurts more. Um, let me just pick a couple pe pieces and then sure. I'll turn it over to my friends on the school committee. Um, NRHS under the scheduled maintenance projects is that both or one of the major projects out there, the, the tank and the leach field. So on the scheduled maintenance um, sheet is the, um, that is the oil tank. Six hundred thousand dollars? No. Four hundred. Oh wait, that's. Wait a minute. I'm Where not sure how it's broken down on here, so I'm just. I have a separate sheet here with scheduled maintenance projects. Okay, I'm looking at. I'm looking. All right, are I, you on I, page three at the top? Is that where you are? Hang on a second. Yeah, I'm looking at. Um, I was looking at the total, but the so the for NRHS it says it's a four hundred thousand dollar increase over last year's ask which means we need to know what the actual so there's two obviously the leach field um, and i think that's under dep compliance um, in inspections and then the um, the oil tank um, one 
So what solution is right now is that came in is at $225,000 for the oil tank. That's not a given, that's just one scenario that's come in. We're exploring every option possible, you know, what the best fit would be for that school. So I'm still not getting it, maybe because I'm still trying to choke down the numbers, um, is in the increase on the NRHS line item for maintenance <coughs> projects is four hundred and three thousand dollars. So what is up? What There's is a lot of items that need to get done. What are they at the high school? Obviously, the you know the big one is the two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars for the oil tank. Um, and I'm going to speak to that and the leach field when you're done with okay. this because in a perfect world, I would almost prefer that we have further discussion of those items outside of this. All right. Remember so, that this. But I, I get that. I'm sorry. I want to jump in. I just want to know what's in that sure. number. Yeah, I'll go through some items right here. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of HVAC re uh, repair and replacement issues at the high school. Uh, there's a lot of compressors that have failed um, or due to, you know, or almost failure uh, that need to be replaced. Um, that total right now is looking like around $64,000. Um, we have floor repairs across the high school. Um, you know, floors are ranging from 20 to 30 years old. Um, so there's some areas that are starting to fail, so we need to repair those. Um, we have a wireless clock system that we're looking to put in place. Right now at the high school, we have a mishmash of a clock system. Um, we have some battery operated clocks, we have some hardwired clocks, so we're looking to integrate that all into a wireless system so that there's consistent, consistency across the high school um, as far as time tracking goes. Paul, the yeah, can speak for that. Um, um, you know, in, in you know, wanting to get that done. Uh, in the auditorium, we have a lot of lighting and control um, issues in the auditorium as far as performances and um, you know programs during the day. So we're looking to upgrade that. Um, you know, we're looking at a twenty thousand dollar price tag on that. Um, we're looking to phase we're gonna have, it's gonna be a phased approach to upgrading the door hardware on the interior classrooms all the interior doors so that um, in a lockdown situation staff does not have to go into the hallway to to lock the doors which they currently have to do so you'll be able to lock it from inside the classroom and not put anybody in jeopardy and going inside the classroom um, that's probably going to be around a 75 to hundred thousand dollar price tag all said and done um, but it's going to be a phased out approach um, Upper gym um, needs to be resurfaced. It needs to be sanded down to the bare hardwood uh, and resurfaced, which will include repainting all the lines. Um, some of the lines that are currently there now don't meet the um, MIA rules and regulations. Um, so those will all come up to code um, and then re um, you know, re poly everything put back down on top of that. Um, that's all right. what I got for the high school. So I think um, we're going to take questions, but I think I'm going to ask that we bring Rob back again. Um, you have a million dollars mm -hmm. over last year's ask, which again doesn't really tell us, so we need that the actuals. A uh, million dollars is a lot now. I am not saying it's not valid. Um, I think what I'd love for you to come back with is to give us the what we spent last year, what we're spending this year, and then just a page on priorities. Mm -hmm. Priorities broken out by safety constraints and needs, those to me are non-negotiable. And then other non-negotiable, like we have no choice, DEP, and we should fix those things. And then anything that falls under that is below the line. Like nice and pretty, for me, is below the line. Sure. And I hope to God we don't see next year nice and pretty. Not on you, on sure. all of you, that we don't see nice and pretty after spending all this money because we really need to focus on this year. Um, one of the things that I know is not going to be a popular discussion, but I need to bring it up, is the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So, and I know you're going to, you should feel free to speak to it. I, I worry about. Uh, I, I know what the discussion point was a couple of years ago, and that was that if we had money left over at the end of the year, that we would take that money and apply it to new vehicles for the district every year, so that a year. so that we don't get ourselves in a tough spot where we um, were when I came in. Right, I I understand that, but um, I I am going to really question the vehicle this year. 
I mean, last year, if it was the floor was rotted out, well, that's that's a problem. But if it's just we just want to be evergreen, I, I, I want to hear more about the vehicle. Okay, and again, I, that probably would be at, at a different discussion than right here, and, and unless you want us to... What is it? The vehicle that we're proposing this year is a uh, replacement of one of the transition vans for the transition program at the high school. Um, it, that program, I'm sure everybody knows what the program is, it takes the students and um, brings them out into the workplace so they can, after they graduate from high school, they can have, you know, yeah. meaningful employment, in, you know, in the community. Um, the one we're looking to replace is a 2006 Chevy Express van, um, so we'll be upgrading that, you know, to a 2019, you know, with warranties and a much more reliable vehicle. Steve, you had a question. No, I just remember that last year we asked that they include the, the vehicle replacement schedule in the, in the budget every year. That was last year. This, and I understand that, but that, but we understand. we can't be held to previous committees. It's something we could do, continue to do, but I'm not. I'm, I question everything. And we all should question well, yeah, everything. Yeah, and that, that's that's fine. I, I think this particular vehicle, though, I mean, it's about 16 years old, right? And it's it's hauling our children. No, I mean, I get it, Brooke. I mean, that's not, that that I'm not worried about, but I mean, just, that is why I asked, what is it? Oh, why yeah, do no, we absolutely. Why do we think we need it? Because it shouldn't just be a, a rubber stamp. It should be, yeah, what no, is I it? Understand. Why do we need it? Yeah, I yeah. agree. Do we even compare this to, um, maybe go to the bus company for these people? Because this is this sounds like a consistent something. I mean, is it? Do we have like a the person that drives it? Are they registered to drive it? Um, do we have to do that? Typically, um, what happens is they they're based at the high school, and during the day they go out and they have different things that they do. But they're based at the high school, so uh, to hire a bus to accommodate them during the day wouldn't be. Um, useful for them so because they, they go out multiple times during it, the day. Yeah. So and, and the I can't even imagine what that would be like to schedule because it would the, it, it will change every day. Well and even you know, if it was over six thousand bucks a year, you know. six thousand times thirteen wow. is you know, over sixty what is it, six seventy eight thousand dollars and that's you know, I'm assuming your line item is includes other components, so it's probably cheaper 30, to purchase 30, 000, it thirty thousand dollars. And maintain it. And know that we're doing it. Uh, Ele uh, uh, Elise, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I feel a little bit silly asking questions about like like these little piddly amounts when we're we're talking about this, you know, the big four hundred thousand. Um, but just to clarify, some of the places like, for example, landscaping, we had three thousand last year and thirteen thousand. Is that because of a specific need that? You know needs to happen in terms of landscaping is no it's just we're trying to improve the overall <coughs> curb appeal of of the um you know the campuses you know and it's it kind of falls back on um adding the third um full-time employee mm -hmm. to the grounds department to support that um person in what they're going to be doing on a daily basis and similar question about like the contracted plowing and sanding that's gone up a bit from last year is mm -hmm. that because the services we pay for are more expensive, or is it because we're anticipate we're trying to anticipate based on what we spent this year? Yeah, and statistically, it seems like we come in around that hundred and twenty to hundred thirty thousand dollar mark uh, every year for snow removal. Um, this year, we just we just had a new contract going to, um, into place, a new three year contract, and the prices because of salt prices, fuel prices, you know, the contract price has increased, so that's why you see you know an adjustment there. Michael. Um, so Rob, part of that uh, 403,000 jump, you said included um, HVAC ins installation or repair at the high school. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering how that compares to um, the HVAC and contracted services item on general repairs, which is also another 50,000. Since it's under general repairs. We are looking at the HVAC plumbing contract. Uh, HVAC and contracted services went from 25 to 75. Right? So that's that's based off of um, numbers year to date, what we've spent um, for repairs because things have failed. Um, what we're looking to do. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, no, continue. Um, we look at take a hard look at that number this year um, with you know replacement of some of these. 
um, components that have failed that we've actually had to have contractors come out and diagnose, and that's reflective in a lot of these numbers. Um, so that might reduce that number, but we just, with the aging facilities that we have, we're just anticipating a lot of contract service calls. So there's some potential overlap between some of that some of that money that comes from the scheduled maintenance projects and the general repairs project is that what you're saying yes i believe i would i would i, would, I don't know what you're how do you define overlap i want to make sure well, that there's not so confusion on that it's there's so basically there's hvac twice right there's one at general repairs and then there's one as what you said was part of the, the high school scheduled maintenance projects all right that's a specific project at the high school we know we have $64,000 of things that need to get okay. done. And so that's different from the... Right, right. Okay. And okay. Yeah, just, would be as repairs come up during okay. the school year, that's what that line of item, item is. All right. Um, unless... It, um, I was just going to ask about the propane um, mm -hmm. conversion at Florence Weyer. Yeah. Um, is this a one-time cost related to that conversion, or is this an ongoing operating cost? No, that, that'll be the operation number, because um, we went from oil to propane over there, and that boiler plant went online in April, so we weren't really sure how much we were going to spend. And we've gone through a third of the year, and we're about $30,000 into propane for the for that site. Um, so we're just trying to forecast you know, what it's going to cost to heat that building for the year. So I, I, are we saying that, that we converted to a heating fuel that costs three times as much as the one we had? Is that fair to say, or no? No, no. not at all. Um, at, at the Sawyer building, we, we have some additional ads that need to be put in place in order for that new system to be um, efficient. So we have a backup oil system in the school. Not that we would have to use it, but um, we have to anticipate that our costs aren't going to be fully realized until that, that full um, conversion of that boiler has taken place. Okay, so this is still part of the conversion. Right, it's still part of the conversion. So do you really anticipate that the oil cost will stay the same? I, I would anticipate that they will go down, but there's no guarantee because the prices have been going up and that's what we're up against at this point. So I think, Whoops. unless there's some more burning intense questions, I really think this deserves Thank you, but don't leave yet. Um, and again, criticism not on you, sure. not on the administration, just this is a big, big nut. We absolutely need to see the um, actuals in this area. I think we also need to, um, we need to get tighter on the requested amount. Um, and I would think that even after we're done here today and you guys do your next iteration, like, I get it big round numbers you don't even have to reduce your ask but in the next time you come those big round numbers need to be more real and <coughs> reduce your ask <laughs> but the, we, we're working on that I mean that's fine but I mean you can tell I mean we know we get it that's yeah. that's how you're doing it but we're just gonna ask that we're a little more focused for the next round we have to remember too that we do have the we do have the issues of the fuel tank and the leach field, which are half a million dollars altogether. That's right. Well, that's why he's going to bring forward yeah. the, Sorry. you know, the. Pre no, wait a minute. That's why he's going to respond to that, and then we'll do this. That's why Rob's bringing forward the what are our priorities for safety, and what are our other non-negotiable priorities, and then what falls below the line. So that's going to happen. Go ahead, Lynn. I'm sorry. So those are going to have to go to the town for both. Unless, you're, unless we're putting them into the budget to eat. No, well, not at the high school. We own it. Yeah. Oh, 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 no, for, that's, that's, for the, for the, that's, the, that's yeah, exactly where I was going to go when I had a moment. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. All you right. <laughs> All right. So I think we're good. Can I just finish? Yeah, that? absolutely. Okay. So, so to your point, that's exactly what's scary. And I, I want to just say something to our staff because <coughs> I was the one who said put those in the budget right now because we have to show them somewhere the yeah. leaching field and the oil tank because we have to do it yeah do I think do I personally believe that they belong in here no I don't I really don't um, but I think that's why I said like I mean I would have asked Rob to come back anyway I know that you do but I would have because I think that discussion has to be a broader discussion exactly to your point these are huge projects 
And what bothers me is I don't want to be in a position. I don't want to be in a position where I'm having to make cuts because of these two enormous juggernauts um, that are sitting out there that we have to deal with. Right. And so you know, I want to be careful that we don't want to say, well, it, it's it, you know, this area has grown a million dollars. Well, we've known all along that about a half a million of that was was these two primary projects, right? So um, I do think, though, that we need to come back as a school committee and have some good discussion on best ways, and, and I think Pat can present a couple of options. We've talked about a number of different ways of trying to, to deal with this piece. So this is a much broader discussion than, than today. You know sure. what I think we should do, too, is um, so if we, and yeah, I get what you're saying, and I want a half, of the, half of the million asked, but still, a half million dollars is a lot of money when you're looking at it. Oh, for sure. Right. But so if you're going to come back, that's one thing. But Brooke, maybe one of the things that would be really helpful too is to get to Lancaster because they were supposed to be the next host for Tri Town, mm -hmm. and I think that would be a wonderful opportunity for us to get in front of all of the boards of selectmen mm -hmm. and say, "Look, here's the reality. Once we have an opinion, right? So you bring it to us. We have the discussion. We take that discussion to Tri Town. Yeah, I agree. Does that work for everybody? Yeah, definitely. I think yeah. <clears throat> So just so the public knows, I mean, Leaching Field and Floating Tank, you've been talking to the town managers on this. They know what's going on to the... They absolutely do. The main yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks a lot. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Rob. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. <laughs> That's why. Yay. Bring me some athletics. Wait a second. Where's the rug? Where's the carpet for the field? Who's got that? Me. Okay. Thanks, Rob. 125,000? <laughs> just come on up. <laughs> Oh my god, it's like oh. I think it's mean that Rob wants it. <laughs> Robbie wants that one Rob too? Rob wants that one? What's up? Sorry. What? He said he yes. I'll take it. The facilities takes care of everything. That's right. Huh? We love you for that. <laughs> oh, ouch. What the heck? Hi! No, go ahead. I'm okay. sorry. I'm just talking to myself okay. as I'm looking. Well, first of all, I just want to thank you guys for your continued support because I don't think our program would be a success without it. Um, over the last year, um, we've continued to have success across all sports. 90% of our varsity teams have made uh, the postseason for playoffs. Um, we've won three central mass sectional championships in wrestling, field hockey, and football. Um, the teams have earned nine league titles and five sportsmanship awards. And then just this past fall, the uh, football team won the Vision Four state title. So these are things that it doesn't happen in you know everyday schools, and we've been on a, a great run right now. And I thank you for your support and allowing this to happen. Um, some of our goals, um, we are still we want to continue to maintain a competitive program um, across all of our sports. We want to provide opportunities for students and try to increase participation. Even though we are, like I mentioned at the last meeting that I attended, we are seeing a decrease a decrease in participation. But, you know, I want to keep giving the students opportunities in different sports to allow them to participate. And then we just continue to emphasize our leadership skills, academics, and our conduct on and off the playing field at all times. Now to kind of go into some of those non-salary requests and the budget drivers, the no approval, look horrible. Um, the first one I want to talk about is transportation. So transportation, um, we have moved and we have shifted from the revolving <coughs> account back into the regular appropriated budget. And this is because um, over the last couple of years, we've been working on um, spending down our revolving accounts. And at this point, we're not gonna be able to keep transportation in revolving because we're not gonna have enough to cover it. For, so it's going back into our regular budget. So that's why I think it's 81% increase. Mm -hmm. um, in addition with that, we're also shifting police details from a revolving um, account into our um, regular budget as well. Um, as for our athletic supplies, some of the things that, you know, for next year are the uniform cycle, which as I've explained is, you know, every five years we work on getting new uniforms for varsity programs. And on the docket for next year is the boys and girls basketball teams, and then the cross country, indoor track, and outdoor track um, uniforms. Also, you know, equipment is, we're purchasing equipment for the high school and middle schools to make sure that the coaches and students have uh, the equipment to the ability to compete. And one thing too next year is because of the new state regulation around AEDs, this past year we had to purchase AEDs for all the middle schools and high schools because they have to have them in every site um, that we're playing on. And then next year we have to replace all the pads. 
So that's something that, you know, moving forward between batteries and pads, there's always going to be something to make sure that our ADs are compliant. Um, one other thing under supplies is we're looking at a purchase a new pair of soccer goals. Um, we have a, one of our sets of soccer goals is 10 plus years old, and we've had to make some repairs over the last few years by hiring a welder and trying to put these goals and make sure they are put back together and safe. But at this point, I think as a safety concern, it's time to replace one set of goals so we're not calling a welder, we're not making repairs to it and getting a new set. Um, and then the other thing that, not a huge thing, but um, I do want to add a new program for next year, and the new program is Unified Basketball. Um, this is a, you know, a program that will give our students another opportunity to participate, but it's also going to be specific where we're giving students in our Life Skills and Transition program another opportunity to play a sport. Our Unified Track program has been excellent. Um, we have between 40 and 50 kids in that program every spring. And this past year, um, Special Olympics and the MIA came together for a Unified Basketball program. We didn't join because I you know, didn't budget for it and we weren't ready. But after talking to other ADs in our league, because there's over 10 schools in our league that have it, they said that those events were the best events they hosted during the fall season. So this is something that I definitely want to you know, jump on, add this opportunity. Um, it's a short schedule. It's about a month and a half long. And it'll give our kids another thing you know, to participate in. So the kind of the big things, and like I said, we do have some shifts um, across the budget, which is why a few things have um, increased. Why don't you talk about that so we don't have to ask our obnoxious questions. Are you yep. talking so about the transportation Transportation component? has shifted, police details. Um, we have moved our officials from revolving to high school user fees for next year. Those are the three major shifts. So, you know what, Pat, in the transportation section, can you please put note in there because it looks like all of a sudden we're paying for transportation where we didn't before. Okay. That would be, because I, I know that people do look at this and I just want them to have the understanding sure. before. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, those are the three major ones that we've moved. Transportation, police, and user, and uh, officials, and the user fees. So talk to me about the carpet for the field, because that was one of my questions, is we, we put, we started a revolving account for, uh, to drop money into that account every year. What are, what is in there? What did we commit to? And do you remember? Does anybody yes. remember? I know we did. Oh, this is the first year that we budgeted for it. And, well, and that would be in, you'll see the... Um, where is it on here? Do you it's know? It's in the admin oh. section, which uh, I will do. Oh, all right. I'll get to that. All right, so don't let me forget, because okay. I want to know what that is, because I think that's really important. The stabilization fund you're talking yeah, about. Exactly. I'm sorry. Thanks for that. Okay, good. And then, um, can you just remind us what the percent participation of the student body is in any of the, I don't care what level of athletics it is. Total. Yes. So we average about 350 students per season, and it's right about 50, a little more than 50% of our student body participates in at least one sport. Okay, regardless of whether it's... Regardless of level right. or what it is. Right. Yes. Okay. So that's important for people to know. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the only question I have that kind of comes up here, but I'm going to mention it, but then we can talk about it in the admin section, is the stipend review. I am not questioning the stipends themselves. I just need to have, and it's not your stipends. It's just we've talked about this for years, right? We've yeah. talked about what are we doing with stipends. If we could just take a look at what is the district across the district doing with stipends, who, not individuals, but what types of positions are getting them. What is the is there a point of view? Do we have a a, a process on what, or is it just kind of like dependent upon? It? And we don't have to answer yeah. it now, but I, was I say that'll take that'll take a whole session. That yeah. that I think is something we need, to, and I don't know. And I'm asking you guys this: Do we do this? You know, and if so, we're going to end up moving something off, really off of a school committee meeting. Do we look at that now? Do we look at that after the budget is approved, which I'm feeling much more comfortable with? And then after the budget season's done, we look at okay, now let's look at stipends for next year's budget planning. But I think we need to look at stipends. What yeah. do you guys? What do you think? What do you guys think? I don't think I would touch it for this year. I think it's okay. I, I would go forward whenever we, wherever we land in March, and then then perhaps in April you can pick it up and take a look at it. But you guys understand where I'm, I'm going with this? Are you in agreement? How do you feel about it? Yeah. Okay. So that's all my dribbling questions. Um, 
Who's got questions? Yeah, Lynn. Oh, you know what? Let me do Elise. Thank you. Uh, do you have questions? Mine's super quick because I remember talking about the dryer and laundry issues last year and you bringing home all the kids' uniforms and washing them. Um, so there's, <laughs> which bless you. Um, Especially the bloody ones. <laughs> so is this a, a, last year we budgeted and then this, this new one is for a, a new dryer somewhere else or is it so to so continue to last upgrade? year when I was working with the uh, facilities director, the quotes that came in, they were only for like, let's go to Home Depot and pick up a washer dryer. Mm -hmm. And so once I started talking to different companies and actually Rob and I have been working and we've had people come in, the quotes are a lot more than what we expected. So that's why we need industrial size for our yeah. locker room area. Um, and that's why there's a dryer in there. Okay, so they're never purchased? No. So this will be $6,000 to get what you need? It's actually 12000 for a new washer and dryer. 12000 12000 Y'all need to go to Sears. <laughs> well, that's, uh, see, that's the problem. But that's that was the problem in the first place. Is they went Are they Sears. using, you're not using commercial ones? No, so right now we have just a regular washing machine and oh. a dryer, but the dryer, the, co the heating coil isn't working, so to dry something it takes three or four. Do you want my dryer? I mean, I might as well give all my stuff away. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on over. <laughs> but that was the problem that was set of quotes last year. <clears throat> they were not industrial size. Right. right. That's yeah, so you did purchase something. No, we're using our old stuff right now. So you. So, so it's, it's not energy thousand. efficient either. No. So Tanya's still taking them home, half of them. Oh, yeah. I'm helping with my coaches who are helping me taking stuff home. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't answer the question. <laughs> so this three thousand dollars wasn't used. So you have that sitting there, and then you've got enough three thousand dollars coming to go towards this twelve thousand dollars that you need for the wash and dryer. Yes. Okay. Because nothing was purchased last year. It's currently right now, and we just, like I said, we just got quotes. I think last week. So you quotes. could actually use that money and then this ask would drop. Yep. Okay, well that's what you gonna do, Rat Brook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that this is I'm not sure that this is coming out the way that it's uh, um <laughs> Well, what we asked for last year was not enough to cover industrial right. so, size. Right. But what I think what right. Lynn's thinking, though, is that that three thousand dollars just is just hanging out there, sitting out there that's somewhere. Because you didn't spend it. And because you didn't spend, it. and that's not how our budget. Like that's not how it it, it works. So I mean, the bottom right. line. Why? Well, I way. think you better back up. <laughs> no, beep, I'm just beep, saying. Beep. <laughs> well, for example, like, rephrase. Like the trainer's car came in at eighty five hundred instead of the eight thousand. So we've spent you know, 500 more on a trainer's part than what we expected the quote to come in at. Because quotes change every year. That's, a, that's what's really hard with, I think in, especially my situation, where if you get a quote in October, when you look at, you know, come July 1 the following year, that can change. Um, and that's what's tough with athletics, I think, is when no, you change. I, th I think you speak about a lot of things. It's not just athletics, uh, Tanya, so I appreciate you bringing that up. But, mm -hmm. but I, I think that the thinking here is that, you know that money is and it is but I mean at our year end that money all comes together and then that's right. when it goes it back into the E&D so that 3,000 for example <coughs> would be it, it would still be here with us somewhere or potentially a part of it but it's gone back in so it, it's not like it builds because it doesn't build if that's what you're thinking and I think that that's what you're indicating but uh. I'm not sure. we, we've been talking about um, ask versus actual and so, like this particular one would be ask and then zero or something because you didn't use it. That, I mean, that would be my thought. I mean, I'm not an accountant. So, for a twelve thousand dollar unit, and she's only asking three thousand dollars, I'm thinking, oh, okay, she's got six, and she's got the half, the other half somewhere else. I have no idea, but that, I mean, that's where I'm going. But I, I, I have to give him such a hard time about the concession stand. Well, I don't think there's any. I don't think there's anything untoward here. I think no, I don't think so at all. I think I think this is uh, for me. It's management of the budget, right? If you this is not you, please remove yourself from here. Okay. Not 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 physically, <laughs> I know. Not physically but if this is what we earmarked and and money wasn't and the money wasn't used and it was shuffled somewhere else, then there is a question as to, well then, did you really need it? So why would you need it now? And we would need to see that through line as to where that money that was earmarked did go. Where did it go? That would mean, I think that's that's what I'm, Actually, and I'm reading your face, Elaine. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. 
But can I ask a, a quick clarifying question? The 12,000 is for an industrial washer and an industrial dryer, right? The total, and right now what you're asking for is an additional 3,000 because previously you had thought it would be a little bit cheaper to replace the dryer, and now the dryer itself is more about 6,000. So that's, right, the 12,000 is washer plus dryer, mm -hmm. is that right? And so what you're asking for right now is just to take you up to the 6,000 so that you can get the dryer. Not the water, but you may come back in future years and ask for the washer. Yeah. So, so what you're talking about is so germane to what we're supposed to be doing. What we were talking about, I just want to separate the two, is a much more philosophical discussion. Right. right. So I just want to make sure, right? Because the philosophical discussion is is the sensitive discussion for all of us. What you're saying is absolutely in line with what we should be doing now. So we need to get a little more visibility into exactly what the financials are in order for us to make some of those decisions. And I don't necessarily think that just because we spent X this year means it should dictate what we spent last year because everything's up for grabs, yeah, right? Changes. Yeah. So, but I think, yeah, sure and I, think, yeah, and I sure. for some reason, I feel like last year we, we did have another line, column no. or two, or maybe it was because we did all that work at the end of the year with Pat on restructuring the way. So those monthly statements should reflect this. Yeah, but they're they're at a macro level, so it's, it, that that it, that's part of the problem. Things get. Yeah, but everything rolls up so into these. This yeah, is an Excel yeah, spreadsheet, yeah. right? So it's hard for, but it's hard for us to look at $3,000 for a washing machine as the athletic department budget is rolled up into one line. That's part of the problem. And that was part of the problem last year. And it was we don't get to see actuals and, well, the way well, we they will. call it. What they call it is actual to date and commitments for the rest of the year. Like you can do that in... In the month, that's fine for this, right? Okay. Well, uh, anybody before you, anybody you. else? Lynn. Uh, so my question has to do with the um, high school sports development account. Do we actually have a list of a running account of what that's going to cover? Because that can be pretty substantial, and yet we're we're paying for the football police detail and refurbishing of equipment. And, oh. And I thought we were from the gate receipts. Yeah. So in revolving, so uh, is the police detail are the po is the police detail covered by the gate receipts? So for FY twenty, I've moved police details back into the police details line into the regular budget. Okay. So what is the get? What are the gate receipts covering? So right now for revolving for next year, it's the track debt offset of one hundred twenty five thousand, and then um, the administrative assistant for athletics. That's in your bright green. All right, so hold on a second. So wait, so does it make sense though for money that's coming in through the gate for the, for the games to not be spent on aspects of the game? So like, I don't know, frankly, I'm questioning, this is not you. I'm questioning why are we taking gate receipt money and applying it to the salary and the comp for a employee which that is to me a variable and it should be in a different yep. you see what i'm saying like anything coming in through the gate receipt should be used and i think we've talked about this before for the games, the games. right um but one thing that probably hasn't even been mentioned here is that that fund grew over a number of years and we've been using the funds every year to offset something. Ultimately, it's probably, we take in about, I don't know, about $60,000 a year that get deposited against that account. So at some point in time, it's not going to cover the track debt. Right, but I think, Pat, I, I hear what they're wait saying. Minute, I think I, I do, I do absolutely see what Lorraine's saying, and I think that that's probably something, to be honest with you, I think you should go back and just do a double check with the auditor because it's a, I think it's a valid point. I, do I recall, though, did we, when we talked about the uh, stabilization fund for that track, 
did this very discussion not come up at that time? Do you remember? Because well, I thought that was issue. part it was of just it. Plan. We were going to the rug. Yeah, we were going to drop extra no, no, money no, no. in. But we we, yeah. we we're haven't dropping. funded that at all yet. We, well, it'll yeah, come, but we're going to drop extra money into that stabilization fund, out, right. irrespective of the gate receipts. Right. right. But I'm concerned that this is dangerous. Like, like for me, I, I got PTSD over it <laughs> from where we were several, and you and I, I think, are the only ones that were here. We really need to keep this clean, like really, really clean. Mm -hmm. it, it'll set people off, most likely me and Lynn and Kathy. We'll do a double check with the auto okay. chair because I absolutely understand where they're coming from with that. Yeah. And I'm having a problem with using the gate receipts for the track debt because the track debt was rolled into the $2.2 .2 million from the towns and the towns already paid, that. they're paying that. So why is that being covered by the? Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah, that's interesting, yeah. We got to clean it up. Just yeah, I think I think we might want to do a rethink on that, Pat. Please, we'll take a look at back at it. Which means, I, again, I don't think there's anything untoward, but um, the longer it goes on without it being very clear, yeah. the more it will be perceived that there is. Yeah. No, absolutely. We'll we'll do a follow up on that next week. Okay. Thank you. You did a great job. It's okay. <laughs> this is all like this is what we have to do. <laughs> Thank you for everything yeah, that you do. Tanya. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. All right, food services. Tom's like, I ain't going up there. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing my lead pants. <laughs> All right, let's roll. Thank you. So on a happier note, thank you so much for letting me talk about what I love to do, and that's school nutrition here at the Sugar Regional. Um, what we have happening uh, for FY20. Um, we did just increase the meal costs actually as of July, January 1 uh, this year at our middle school and at middle schools and high schools and staff. Um, we're going to continue our drive to increase participation uh, by using cutting edge menus and concept meals. We're going to continue our collaboration with uh, extended <coughs> learning as well as any other program. Uh, that we can and we're looking at a, a combination with the um, special education department and um, teaching and learning as well and uh, we hope to continue our relationship with some of the local farmers in the area to bring our students the, and staff um, the freshest and best products that we can and all of these with all of these things in action we're hoping to uh, keep the ball rolling in a positive manner and not ask for any money and well, just you don't have to not want to ask we're okay <laughs> with you asking for money if you need it yeah but right now uh, the so way things are we're doing very well all right um, so we've we got a lot of asks on here mr. I'm not asking for money so why don't you take us through it <laughs> where would you like to start I'll start on your slide yeah. let's go through he's your slide he's we did. let's see did you, did you cover everything yeah. that was yeah. on the slide okay then I'm sorry I apologize <laughs> what do you want what would you like what do you need well um, I'm looking at a, an increase in my own salary uh, as well as staff their contracted salary um, the reason being over the past can you believe I've been here nine years isn't that cool okay um, so keep going let's so we're looking this. at that we're looking um, at a little bit of an increase in substitutes we're looking at a 10% increase in contracted services um, and that's because we have a lot of aging equipment Contracted services covers the repairs and uh, parts for that. Uh, provisions uh, went up approximately 2%, and that's the average. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a 5% increase in um, supplies. That's because of uh, the tariffs and things that are going on mm -hmm. uh, in politics. Clothing allowance is, is the same. Um, we went up a little bit in equipment, um, and that again is to just continue to buy updated and, and new, the uh, new equipment as needed and, and small wares, things under $5,000 that aren't uh, anything big or capital for the, for the district or the towns. Um, our dues and mileage stayed the same, mail tax. 
we're hoping that we'll be paying out more because we will be serving more adult meals mm -hmm. and reimbursements are uh, congruent to what we, we serve. So with the increase in participation, we'll see an increase in reimbursement. And that's all I got. That's awesome. So I have some questions. So if we have a surplus, yes. Do we put that money into a separate account in order to help off help offset expenses for any additional equipment, et cetera, et cetera? What happens to that money? We we have um, a balance that's allowable by the Food and Drug Administration in regards to that, and they allow us to have three months worth of expenditures in reserve, and we we have reserve. Okay. For that. And then we what do. happens when we go above the three months? Where does we, it? We have to. Spend it on reinvest into the program. Okay, and that's why that over the years um, we've invested in new um, serving lines, um, signage, our entire the POS the program. system. All of that was paid through those funds. So we currently have three months operating expenses, which is good because nobody knew how long the shutdown was going to last. Yeah. and we here at Neshoba, we would be able to take ourselves through to the summer, um, and that's why you want to have that three months. Anything over that has to be reinvested into the program. All right. Well, nice job. Thank you. I hope we're listening to the. I know you do, so it's not a criticism. Why am I saying this? Like defending myself all day long, but I hope you're listening to the kids and what they want and what they're interested in. I do know. I do think that you're. I see things all over social media that you're very responsive to the parents. So I appreciate that as well. Is is much as possible that. That's the fun part. Uh, we can we can speak <laughs> on many different things, and although they, they they all have legitimate concerns, the best part is when once it's explained and they understand it. Right. Right. It's, Knowledge. It's fantastic. When uh, he's asking for a two percent increase in raises, and I'm just wondering, aren't they part of the union? Yeah. His. Yeah. That's yeah, right. So would this be an addition? No, 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 it's not addition. So we need to take That's the increase that it would actually cost. It's not an increase. Okay. It's, it's a contracted or contractual. And does it come out of your <coughs> admin budget for increases, salary? No, it's it's contractual. Oh, they're contracted versus employee. Yes. Got it. So sorry. Contracted versus employee. That makes sense. Okay, and so I'm looking at, so you have self-sustaining right now. You're, yeah, he's yeah, getting surplus. surplus. That's, that's fine. And so, so we can let him go. Let him go. No, he's perfect. <gasps> I just want to ask Pat this. So let you, him go. You, you can keep three months in reserve. So do you currently have three months in reserve? Yeah, we yes. just said that. Yes. So yes. Is, that, is that the 48000 that I'm looking at? Is that the, the reserve we're talking no, about? This no, this is the ask, Lynn. We're going to get to that. That's okay. We're done with that. Okay. Okay. Have off with you, darling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Tom. Have a great rest of the weekend. Thanks, Tom. You Thanks. too. Moving on. Raina. Extended day. Raina, make it happen. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I appreciate the opportunity to be here again. I was here twice before, so I've shared with you some information um, about our program and our improvements. So I'm going to do a little bit of a um, repeat, but I'll try to keep it brief. So our goal for extended learning is, again, to continue offering a self-sustaining program that provides diverse enrichment opportunities and also supports social-emotional learning. And our budget this year is level with last year, and it supports this goal. Um, as approved at my last, I think it was yeah, the last time in front of the school committee, uh, we will be increasing our tuition by 3%. That'll be effective July 1, um, and that was reviewed prior. In terms of our enrollment, I wanted to um, share with you that we're about the same as last year, about 300 students, but what is different is we've experienced a 31% increase with kindergartners, um, which does definitely change the staff dynamics and programming. It's a good thing. It's just a, it's good to know that that's in fact a re reality. Um, to ensure we're meeting our goal, I did conduct, as promised to the school committee, a family parent survey, and that was done in January of this year. And I was very pleased. We got a 36% response rate, which is pretty significant. That's about 100 families out of the 300. And uh, the key findings that I believe are important to note is that 90% of those who responded. 90% rated our program either very high or extremely high in quality. There are a number of dimensions. Um, families also rated our free, we, do have, we did offer this year a few free performances, which everyone likes the free word, and that was rated very high. 43% of the families participated in our fee-based multi-rich Richmond programs, which means 54% did not. 
I'd like to see that number go up. I'd like to see more families experiencing giving their kids opportunities to spark interest. Another key insight was families at the Hale School where we have our fourth and fifth graders, they would like more programs that are specific to that age group. Um, we did build a citizenship and connecting community program for those fourth and fifth graders and we'll see how that plays out this year to see if we want to expand that for next year. Um, some of our parents have been asking for a sixth grade to increase to include sixth grade. We haven't done that. We need to think about that a little bit more. That may impact how we move forward with um, the program. Families at the um, Mary Rowlandson Elementary School, they want more affordable programs. And by programs, I'm talking about the enrichment programs. And overall, the families want more, no surprise, STEM, sports, and I was glad to see this, cultural activities and Spanish. That was identified in the survey. So with this feedback, my submitted 2020 budget really shows just a slight increase in enrichment and contract services um, to continue to offer low cost and high quality programs that add value. I also want to continue to provide some of the free performances that we did this year, which was like the Sahori Weaving, Math Science, Spectacular, because what I've what I've seen, and it's very evident to me in listening to the families, is that when their kids experience something that's exciting, it sparks interest, and it gets them more engaged and feel comfortable, then they might wish to take a chance and, and sign up for a multi-enrichment program. So one feeds into the other. Also, um, we did offer this year two different programs for our middle school children, which was feedback we got from the community. We offered yoga, which was well received. It was just a pilot program and I'm rolling it out to all middle school students this spring. And we're piloting a woodworking course, which I'm really excited about. And that's starting in March. It's a lottery, it's a pilot, hoping that those programs get enough traction that I can see expanding them for next year. Is this, excuse me one second, is that, is that Bob from Bolton? Yeah. And Patrick. Yes, and Patrick. Yes. Yeah, awesome. So, um, I Thank you for that. with them this year, and it's been a lot of fun. The kids are excited, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, particularly the sixth and seventh. In any event, um, this year for me has been a learning curve. I'm very excited it is level spending, but I think that we've made the right decisions based on family feedback, student engagement, and the learning that we're that I'm witnessing with my staff. Do you, um, do you, um, uh, I, surveys can be so obnoxious, but do you ask for feedback from families? Uh, uh, no, that's a, that's what she was saying. Yeah, like, this I, is all based on yeah, uh, surveys. I, I yeah. asked um, three open-ended questions, so I had like three pages of very, very specific uh, requests. Not okay. all of which is reflected in this year's programming, but some has been responded to. And when you and when you ask them for the feedback, do you kind of let them know? I mean, your communications anyway, right? Do you let them know what the results of it were? That's going to come in my next communication. I wanted Got to it. put it out. Got it. Got it. That's why I asked. Uh, okay. Because yeah, I just did, we just uh, put it out. January 11th was when the deadline, and I just analyzed the results in January 18th. So it's been like three days, four, five, six days, oh. but. It, I'm glad it, you know I got the feedback I got much better results than I thought okay. much better feedback. Thank you for that. Yeah. So the feedback on that so when you send out the surveys is it only to the students that are already in enrichment or is it to everybody? No this was just to the extended learning families. That was Could the commitment yeah. Why would she no she's extended learning why would she do it beyond the because, people she serves? Because I think that the, the kids that are in extended learning the parents are unaware of what's going on in the program. I don't so know when you that, ask them, oh when no, you ask I see those two different need. things. Yeah. Yeah. Two we, different things. But yeah. we are extended learning. Our enrichment programs are just for the extending learning families, yeah. other than the middle school. Um, and I did send out a separate question to the middle school parents, all middle school parents, sixth, seventh, okay. and eighth graders who aren't in extended learning, to say, would you like to have some programs? So okay. That was a separate uh, dialogue. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? I know you sir you wait for the last best for the last. That's so. for last. You are the best. You and Tom get big old red uh, yeah. gold stars. And I don't want Rob to feel bad or I don't want Tiny to feel bad. We love you both. It's fine. It's how it works. It's fine. It's not you personally. Jesus. All right, thank you. Thank you, Raina. Thanks, Raina. All righty. And Marie. It's time to go here. Coming up together? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
Awesome. Pat, all right, here we are. And now I'm going to be quiet and let the superintendent run her. Mm. So, oh. <laughs> did you hear that? No. Uh, just for the record, I'm now going to be quiet. And Steve goes, huh. <laughs> I did not get that. Huh, bet she can do that. <laughs> So I'm just going to tee it up just really quickly here, but I, I do want to remind our school committee member, uh, members that, and I said this at the beginning, but as you've walked through it, this is not, we have not taken the opportunity now to go through um, and have our individual meetings to take a look at where we start to carve away. The whole point of this particular meeting came back from years ago when you said, we want to see what everyone asks for. Right. And so that's why you've got what you got. So please keep in mind that the, I mean, there's no way that, I'm not sure where this landed, because I know that it was, a, was it around 7.1? 7 7.1, 7 7.2%. There is no way that that is a feasible budget that we can move forward. But you'll recall that, it, it, like, I need to go back now with my team and with individual meetings, and the very, like, you've got a flavor of what the the, the asks are, right? And what you're gonna what you're gonna support and the priorities. But we need now to go and really do the drill down. This is a blueprint. This you've seen what everything's been asked for, but there's no way that this budget can move forward as it is. So I just really want to be clear because that's when you'll start to see over the course of the next, like not this next meeting, but probably the meeting thereafter, you'll start to see different iterations, which is what we've done in the past. We've brought forward and said, yeah, here are the areas we've made the cuts in already. And the cuts don't mean that it's cuts to a staff. It means to what the, the ask, ask was. Right. So I'm glad you said that because before Superintendent Clenchy came, this isn't necessarily, we had discussions like two or three times and then we were kind of done what we didn't hear was the voice of the the field right so that is why we have this meeting so while you're going out and you're talking to folks in your towns or you're talking to your select friends or whomever if they say oh my god I heard the budgets going up seven percent no it's not that was our opportunity to hear from anyone regardless we're not looking at the actual final assessment numbers to the town we want to so because when we come when Brooke comes back and she brings her folks back in what she's gonna what we're gonna be able to do is go oh I remember when Tanya asked for X and I remember when Rob said Y that's what they're talking about it gives you some level of context. understanding and yep. context we didn't have that before we need that now right it will it will serve us well so that's what the point is so and that's thank exactly you for right that. yeah so even as Pat goes through her numbers right now because and I asked her I, I said there's no need for her to go through every single line on this just highlight a couple of salient points because we're wrapping up you know and so you've heard the major ask she's just going to kind of try to pull it a little <coughs> bit together and she and Anne Marie will kind of um, help be there to support any other questions but just just so that you know that this is going to change and I don't know how many iterations we did last year we did a number of iterations oh, before the school yeah. committee I think it was just about every other school committee meeting quite frankly until the March meeting yeah yeah and we so, added a couple yeah so so just to be clear that's one of the reasons why we don't have a hundred copies of this going out everywhere the copies are sitting around this table nobody else has copies so are you guys gonna take us cuz cuz Go ahead. So, Pat and well, Anne Marie, can Anne I turn it over to you folks, please? Anne Marie, Just start. Wanted to thank you for the opportunity to sit here with our partners across the hall in the business office to support their work. And Vicki and Darcy were here earlier, most especially in case the principals needed to call them for some figures. They're very generous with their time as far as that goes. For from the for our office, we have um, six people who were going to six teachers who have announced their intention to retire, and and, and who are eligible for the retirement bonus. So that that will be a six times ten thousand dollars. We can do that one in our head. Sixty thousand dollars will go for that. The lane changes aren't due in our office until the end of the month. But right now we've got requests. You know, lane changes are when people go from a bachelor's degree to a master's degree, or when they get educational attainment. Um, we have twenty-four thousand dollars right now in requests for lane changes, but the teachers have got until the end of the month. To, to finish those, so that could change. I think I'm speaking to you uh, at your February 13th meeting and the HR update, um, and I'll probably have a better figure on that by then. Okay. So thank you again for the opportunity to present this budget this morning. Um, 
and this is a work in process as we as we talked about over and over again um, any comments that you uh, or questions that you have on everything else that was has been presented today I might be able to answer some of them and I can do that after I just go through this very quickly you'll see a, a small change in the OPEB assessment um, and that is because last year of uh, this current year we had some money in uh, withholding um, that was set aside for um, uh, it was like a liability that other <coughs> communities were sharing that money was used to come up with the fifty thousand dollars that we had been committing to OPEP year after year. Is so, so, so wait, yeah. What I want to understand wait, wait. is what did we drop into OPEP last year? I, I know what we voted. What, what did we vote and what? And then we put extra in. I didn't think we? it was a hundred thousand. I, I just have to double check, but I think we put a hundred thousand in last year. I think we need to make that right now here. for me. That number needs yeah. to be increased. Okay. That that fifty thousand is not appropriate based on our arc. I mean, we, we, we aren't even meeting. No, we know that. We're not. I know we yeah. know that, but we're not meeting our annual, let alone what our what. The, yeah, I don't even want to say the word deficit because it's blah. so for me, it's like that needs to go up because we had committed to increasing every year, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I thought I thought we looked at it. That there was a number, and then if there was an additional. Cause this is why this is confusing me that there was a number and if there was an additional money left over that would get put into it so it'd be the 50 plus whatever or whatever that well, that was from was. health insurance but that's not going to no, happen because no, no. health insurance that's not reflected here right no. I agree no. with her no I know that's what I'm saying it was like I thought originally it was from health insurance but no there was a number <coughs> of whatever was left over and she's talking about thir is that the 38,000 you're talking about yes it was, was left it, over so in that the budget that should be 85 no, because it should be more than that because we put more than fifty thousand. Last year, we put eighty-five in. I, oh, we did. At year end, we I think we put. Every we put in money in but last But this year. isn't reflected here. This is no, but this is uh, this is the budget. This is the budget line. It's got nothing to do with anything. That's extra. why actuals we need. Yeah. This this no, this section. No, 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 that was last year though. So I think what probably what might help Pat is if we actually say. I would lay out OPEP to date. Maybe that's what we need. It's yeah, like an we'll OPEP to date. Have her show exactly so that so that you haven't lost track of where Please, we're at. Please, yeah, and you I, know exactly what we've got sitting in that account. Because right because that's a that's a huge liability for the three towns, yeah. almost more than anything else. And I support the notion of bumping that account. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah, I'm good with that. Also, I think didn't didn't at the end of last year, at the end, at, at, I'm I'm trying to remember in June, we put. She showed us how much under budget we were. Mm -hmm. X amount of dollars went into uh, E&D. Mm -hmm. But then we also took and put 50,000 into stabilization. Track and field, two, yep. the, two track, the two stabilization funds mm -hmm. that have been approved, mm -hmm. track and field and OPEP. So that's over and above what we had budgeted right. for last year. So in reality, we, we once again, the numbers are not telling me the story that I need to know. Which is why we're going to get it. And we've, we've had this problem. We had this problem last year. I was. But I think that's so, yeah, it's not. So, I mean, so there already is money in the stable, in, in the track and field stabilization fund. Correct. But it wasn't, but it wasn't budgeted for this year, is what you're saying. So, how do we, you know, we need to be kept okay. abreast of what these, these so things are. So maybe you can give us that okay. view for OPEP okay. and sure. then give yeah. us that view for the stabilization fund that we established last year. That's a good point. That, that's easy enough for us to get. Um, on, on, did, oh, did you want to continue? Or? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> um, you can see that there's a um, slight increase in legal and that's based on current trends. Transportation is contractual. Um, uh, we have a reduction in our McKinney Benjo and that's based on our current experience. Um, debt services declining, um, unit A and C tuition reimbursements, that's all contractual. Um, charter and choice uh, assessments, you can see that, that um, those are the numbers that were released on Wednesday, <coughs> they're preliminary numbers, this, this could change. Um, and as far as, um, I'm just going to move on to insurance and have you ask me questions afterwards. Unemployment costs um, have gone it has gone up because it's uh, based on current trends. Uh, Worcester County Retirement Assessment, that we got that a couple of weeks ago, and that's based on um, the assessment that Worcester County Regional Retirement gave us. So what's that? It's 
That's for our retirees. No, 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 no. What is? Tell me. Talk to me about the numbers because I might not have been here, and I and I would slap myself if I were. You know, yeah. So you want her to talk about these last couple that she was just talking yeah. about? Yeah. So un the uh, Worcester County retirement, for example, is that one that you you were asking about, or the unemployment insurance? We're on this page, guys, at the beginning of the book. Yep, yeah, they are. Uh, Elaine and Steve. Executive Very. Section one. That's right. Section yeah. one. Got it, guys. Yeah, that's okay. also in the back. So that's also in the back. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's where I was too until Brooke helped me. So out. you're working off of this? Yeah, we're working off the portal yeah. huh? behind tab one. So for the insurance, um, we're down to the um, Worcester retirement in incentive. It's it's actual. Uh, I mean, Worcester County retirement assessment has gone up about sixty. $60,660. Um, Medicare, that's all based on salaries across the district. Um, health insurance is another big one. Um, that you, you'll see that there's, a, it looks like it's a reduction, when in fact, um, last year when we budgeted for health insurance, um, I budgeted at a higher number than our experience came in, and then factor also into that, the, um, school choice revenue that we have coming in is offset in that line and um and you also have people that drop off or people that move i mean it's a right. number that's just it's moving, moving all the target. time anyway and then any any of the um programs across the district that have um retirement the revolving programs they would that would also be offset in that line so now, does anybody have any questions about any of these items? A lot of questions, but I'm I I think I'm not ready to ask them. I need to digest this. Yes, sir, what does school choice revenue get offset into uh, benefits and insurance? School choice it, it's very different than any of the other revolving funds. Um, if you have revenue come in for school choice, you can then use it for anything in your budget. Off, you can um, charge expenditures sure. against that revenue. So it's very different than the assessment that we get. You can use the assessment as an expenditure in your budget. And, it, and it's clearly spelled out that it has to be done that way in, in um, Mass General Law. So we just chose to offset against insurance. Amendments. Yes. So let's, let's have a, per, 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 uh, a point of view on that. And I think it's something we need to bring up. So guys, keep me honest or Brooke can put it on an agenda. Uh, because school choice is so fluid, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. putting it against a program, a one-time program or a one-time big expense makes sense, but putting it against something that's above the line in the budget makes me nervous because then we rely on it and it's not there, which is what happened, right? Yep. right? Well, yes, because the fund grew, the revenue grew in the fund. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, it, but it could also be the reverse, too. Right. And we're at the point right now where we're using what comes in. Why are we offsetting it to the kids that are coming, that are choosing in? You know, divorces the kids. At, at some point in time, this is where we chose. And so just for consistency, we've stayed with You that. know, that makes sense that first yeah. and foremost, it should offset the kids that are leaving. I think I think it's a really valid point. And I think this is another thing I would check with the sure. auditors because I know that that's past history, but I would take a look now and see if it's time to change that. Yeah, just so, make it, yeah. make it yeah, its yeah. own yeah. responsibility. So, yeah, I, I would agree. I think that it makes sense to do that too, Lynn. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all... It's all one anyway. It's just kind of where you move it, but I, yeah, I would check with. But it's easier to track. It's easier. No, I totally agree. Right? No, not just yeah. this, but all of it. Right? So yeah, it's like it makes sense. Yeah. Even the gate receipt yeah. stuff. Poor Tanya's gonna be so upset. Yeah. Um, so are we going to? I might have jumped ahead. We're just in. We're just in insurance. Right? We're gonna let Pat finish. Well, I I'll finished. You. Oh, I'll she's finish done. The insurance. All right. So what else? Questions. We have so many follow-up components here, right? And what you could do too, and I think you've done this before too, Lorraine, is you've had people send questions because it's a lot to digest and to sit here inside of you know the four hours that we've been here. It's a lot for you to digest. So it's oh, and especially for those of you in your first like year or two. I mean, for those of you a little bit more seasoned on the school, oh, you're used to no, seeing this. No, this is this is more information than we've ever had. Yeah, thank you. No, I I'm serious. This makes more sense to me than ever. Yeah. 
Um, but did you get down to legal? Or was it just? No. Oh, yeah. yeah. I went past that. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to go back and talk about legal. Yeah. We want to talk. Let's talk about legal. Because um, <clears throat> let's go to that. Because you know what? I'm glad you said that. Because I saw it and I circled it. And go back up there. Where is it? It's on the first page. Anne Marie's. Yeah, no, we're, yeah. All, yeah, we're all looking at this. I'm looking at this one, though, because it's easier for me. I, I, my brain can't absorb. So our voted budget for FY19 for legal services was 60000 What was our, well, we don't know what our actual was, but what is it year to date? Do you know? I can't tell me right now. All right, check. so while she's looking that up, because then we're increasing it to 75000 which still seems conservative to me, but I'd like to know where we are year to date, if that's okay, yeah. to she understand to, the relationship. Yeah. And Lenny. Um, so the Oops, NRHS debt right service. Right so the we, we, that's the old 2000. Uh, the high school, school debt service. Yeah, can we like, kind of break down where we're at with that? Sure. That, that would be another, that's another one that probably I would love to see the history on that and where we're today. So sure. I think that's a bigger thing than this this meeting too. I think that would be great. Sure. And there's a lot of information on that. Yeah. So our legal actual right now is at forty four thousand seven eighty. However, we have only received invoices through October. I think they're a little bit delayed. Okay. In, in so I want to stop for a second and talk about this line item. And I want I, I really want to make sure that we're very open and transparent about this. I will be careful. If our voted was 60,000, and as of end of the month, October 2018, our legal line item was what? 44,780. So 45K. Then in essence, we have November, December through June, we have eight months to, we've got to cover eight, fifth, We've got $15,000 to cover eight months worth of legal expenses. Uh, the concern, there is no concern as to whether or not we're being prudent with our legal budget. That's not a concern because the district's being forced into positions where it must defend itself. I have no questions. Do any of you have any questions about that? If not, my concern is how, how do we know that $75,000 is going to be enough for FY20, given the fact that we are not even accounting for half of the year's legal expenses? And I think that that is a line item that needs to be increased, and I think we need to be prepared for the public to ask us questions about it, why we're doing it, and what the concerns are. I really feel strongly about this, because yeah. what's the worst thing that could happen is that we lowball this number and we get down the line and it's like well what the heck is happening and it's not that the district isn't managing its legal budget well it's that the district is being forced to defend itself that's that's absolutely right uh, to be honest with you I, I would I tend to feel the same as you do I would be very comfortable to move that because I mean I just know what I know that's happened in the last couple of months and that that fifteen thousand is gonna. I bet you it's already done. To be honest with you, so I would also suggest that we take a refresh look at that line. Be, be no, don't don't be conservative with it. Like that's one where double it. At the time when I put that number in, I thought that I was. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Being really conservative. I'm that sure. I was realistic about it. Yeah. Um, where but it was so going to land. But we've had Based a number of what yeah. has just come in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. And if and if it looks like things are going to alter course, then you know, you can reduce that later on, right? Yeah, I, I would completely agree with you. I really think that we need to go back and have another another look at that line. Okay. I, I don't know, can we ask about the legal breakdown? I mean, can we I'm only worried about, you know, are we doing things that we can avoid? Like, are we going to be doing all the right stuff? I mean, I, I don't know. You and I'll talk that. offline. Okay. Okay. Are we good? I'm good. Thank you. Anything else on that? And I'd also just like to make mention um, about um, the changes in funding from grants. 
um, again, it's unknown, especially with the federal grants, and that not we don't know what these numbers are, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks we might have a better idea. So that could physically change okay. these numbers. Okay. So um, to the good. Um, you want to talk about the track and field? Uh, track and field. Oh, That's track and field. Oh, track and field. The carpet, the, it's good. We got to keep it. I mean, we bought it. We need to maintain like it. Like that stabilization yeah. fund is. What about the track? Because I know last year it was looking kind of worn, and I'm sure it's gotten even worse this year. When are we going to do that, resurface the track? Oh, I sound like I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You're right on point. <laughs> <laughs> Is it in here? It's not in there. It would be in for 2021. Yeah. Is that a is that a conscious decision or because you want to push it off because you have bigger things that are more important? No, I think based off the condition of the track right now, I think feel that we can get through 2021. In you do. Yes. Do you do too? We check oh yeah, we talk about this very. Oh, we okay. work very closely there. on this dynamic. So you know what? When you do that little one pager for us that says safety, because that's all Lisa, <laughs> safety other you know non-safety critical and then below the line it's like oh and by the way don't forget this is coming because that's a biggie okay that's good what else well the, the number's weird i mean the, the request is 49.7 which for the track and field I, I like that it's got a not a round number at the end of it but where are we yeah, this is the stabilization fund or not no, no this is the no. debt service what no. back to this is yeah. on the towns why is this this was the 2.2 million dollars to pay for the Field and the football. Why Where are we? Where are we? I'm on the second page. Yeah. Under account name, it says high school track and field debt service. Yeah. Right? So the town's paid $2.2 million for the, the, the field, the track. Is this maintenance? Or is it? It's this is bond service. Debt service. Yeah. Debt service. Yeah. The town's paid it, but how do you think? Do you? Do you, are, are you the towns would have paid it through our budget, not through. Okay. Right? They would have paid yeah. it through our budget because that that we own. So it's not like Center School Center got School. a brand new yeah, track and field, and yeah, y'all are paying pay for that. Right. What? So when They're it's a it. when it's a district level, or when it's the high school specifically, because we own the high school, it comes right. through our budget. Oh, uh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, no, yeah. good question so though. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great ask. question. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, I'll ask, how long do we have to pay for this thing? Where are we? Mm -hmm. I wish I could see You know what? Why don't we do an update on that for you? Yeah. Well, well, you guys remember all these things we're asking for. Will you remember? Because I'm not going to remember it all. I have it all. And my peeps here aren't going to remember it all because we're saturated. I think, I think we ask for that <laughs> regularly or yearly or something like that. Yeah, where we are on all that I think service. I put that out. Good one, Stephen. I just, again. All right. So and one other thing, the yeah. capital requests that have been submitted to the towns, they are preliminary because we haven't oh, had so any conversations. Right. They're in the back flap. So you're going to keep us posted on where those conversations oh, yeah. land? Yes. Okay, that's good. Uh, let's do a quick recap of the things we know we would like um, our friends, the administration, mm -hmm. to come back. First of all, I don't even want to say thank you because it doesn't speak to what the value of this day has been and the amount of preparation and the dedication and frankly it feels really good to hear from people who are really focused on the right things so to all of you thank you very much because um, kids are why we're all here and you just illustrate that in everything you do so if I could take them all home and raise them I would but I can't um, so I appreciate that um, I, I, will, I think we want to hear about just the additional staffing as, an, as, a, as a bucket. Like, what are all the staffing requests as a bucket? Some, some of those positions may not make it to the next They generation. may not. So no, 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 no. Next. So you're going to do what you're going to yeah. do. I'm saying when you come next, yeah. we want to see all those staffing positions as a, in a bucket. Um, some of the one-off conversations we want to have throughout our other discussions are, um, other meetings are, What's our point of view on textbooks versus online in this upcoming cycle? We don't have to get down to a philosophical discussion, some a little bit, but we would kind of want to understand to Elaine's point, when are we using textbooks, when are we using online, when are we augmenting, 
and when to, and, you know what I mean we just need to yeah. understand where you I was thinking at. I was thinking about that too and I'm not sure if this is where you want to go but as, as you were talking about it at that time I thought probably want to make sure that we bring our principals into that because uh, you know they, they really will drive like the high school especially is its own yeah. beast yeah right so to have that discussion without like Paul or a department chair or two in the room I, I don't think would be wise I think you really need the people that know so. yeah that's good and then on technology we really need um, a deeper understanding of what's going on there uh, it's not to say that we that there's that they, we're not being transparent it's more we, we really need a lot more discussion it's a lot on that. To, yeah it's a lot to take in really is. and 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 we also need to be able to project for where we're going to be going with it because to Lynn's point it's not something that and we all know it's not going away it's the way people do business it's the way you know things work teaching and learning was there anything I know facilities Rob's area um, because he's got so much going on this year and I just want you to know one thing Rob truly I think these buildings I think we've all recognized these buildings are kind of ignored for a while I think you know sometimes and I'm not cramming anything on anybody else my point is that sometimes you're focusing in one area and if you're not minding all the other areas things start to kind of deteriorate but I really appreciate the fact that our buildings look like they never have regardless of age so that you're asking for these things doesn't mean that we're not we're, you know we're you know hackles are up it's that we understand we've seen already you've already proven what you've been able to do so please take the comments and the concerns and the questioning in the vein in which they're intended um, and then I think um, you're going to bring back a request, um, an update on the way we're positioning um, the asks because we really aren't, not this, because we really aren't able to understand what the ask one year versus next year means to us without understanding what we've spent, what the actuals were. Okay. We need to talk about that. And I know Brooke has. You guys get, but 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 Brooke, we can't because we, it's we're kind of like it. shooting yeah. in, a, you know, it's kind of shooting in the dark a little bit. We need to. Uh, this is going to take us some time to think through and and plan because the work, especially during, like especially now. I mean, when you take a look at the fact that we have to have this all wrapped up in the next month. I would say, why don't you why don't you take a look at what you can get done? Yeah. You know what I mean. It it, it it's not just for the school committee. It's for the broader. Right. No, I understand, and I think that. You know, I hear it certainly about technology. I hear it about facilities and such. I think that that's what I'm saying. I think we we need Can to go back pieces? and take. Yeah, there are pieces here that I absolutely. I'm not disagreeing with Steve at all. Uh, I think we just need to go back and think it through so that it. it makes well, sense. why don't you start with those areas we've identified, mm -hmm. and then um, you know know that that's probably where we need to be for next year, right? We, I mean, <laughs> right, because we have to rebuild our budget document in order to insert something. Understood. Yeah. And I think though, if we're presenting data one way monthly, it should be presented quarterly and annually mm -hmm. in a similar vein so that there is that, sure. you know. So. So if I can just, can I say something? By what, sure. Or when you're, only when you're done. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> the one thing I would bring up, and I appreciate your, your comments, um, I would say the other day we had our admin team, everybody that you saw here um, this morning, came to meet for our regular meeting on Wednesday morning. And we started the meeting by saying, because we had a couple new folks that were going to be coming presenting for the first time, like Raina and Lisa, who said, I'd barely gotten my feet wet. I really didn't know what I was doing. And, you know, and here she, she said did she did a great, great job. job this morning, you know. And so we started that meeting by saying, okay, for those of you who are a little more seasoned, what are things that you would bring to the table? And it may have even been Rob, now that you're sitting here, so I'm here I'm going to say this, and it may have been you that said it. But I, so the various comments would come through, like make sure you're clear, make sure you're succinct, watch your time, you know, be informed, be, you know, so as we were kind of talking through a couple of them role play and said, well, should I say this? No, that's probably not the best way of saying it, you, should, you know, but I think it was uh, Rob or somebody else might have been Rob that said, and keep in mind that they're here to support us. Mm -hmm. That school committee is here to support us. They're here to work in partnership with us. And so when they come to the table, like, you know, the, the, the first group when Ross started and then Laura said, you know, how much we appreciate the support of this school committee. I cannot, I cannot stress that enough how much our administrative team 
so respects this committee and so appreciates the level of support that we receive. So I, they worked really, really hard for this, and I'm really, really proud of everybody that presented you all did a great job. Um, but I want to thank our school committee for asking the questions. We are okay. And if when you take this home and, and you're looking over it, and if you find something that doesn't make sense to you or what, let, just rifle it back to me. I mean, that's not what going she, home and looking through this. That's what she <laughs> said last time. You know, if you've got questions, rifle them all right. to her, and she'll rifle them all to us. Or if we find something that doesn't make sense, let us know, yeah. so that we we continue to work to be better at our craft. And so I feel better even like this year. And we said even our process this year was much smoother than any other year we've been in. But Pat and I still know that we're still tweaking. And this goes back to the friends that got it. We're still making changes. Some of the changes that are in here, quite frankly, are based on the audit. But then you had a couple of things come today that didn't think of that. You're absolutely right. We'll go back and talk to the auditor about that. I mean, it just makes us better. Yeah. It makes us stronger. I love. I was really looking forward to today. <laughs> I really was. Sick. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I was. I, it just it, it just gives you such a beautiful view of the school district, which is an amazing school district. So that's it. Thank all you. right, guys. Anne Marie, Pat, thank you all thank you so much. And that thank staff you. page is oh, it's right there. Oh, sorry. Right. Out, so. We need to go through that at our next school committee meeting, or it's just a quick snapshot. Yeah. It's not even as long as last year's. But Brooke's gonna do her, her magic. magic. We've not adjourned. Sure. Excuse me. We haven't. Did we have to adjourn? Oh, no. Yeah. No workshop. Yeah. It's workshop. It's workshop. But we so open it. Yeah. You still have to adjourn. We need to. We yeah. We close the meeting. So can I have a nice of you to just take off? Big no, problem. Y'all need to stay and do the job. All right, uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Lynn did it and Steve Second. did it. I'm not even going to ask for the vote. I'm just going to make us. Da -na -na. <laughs> All those in favor. It's unanimous. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Remember that.